The following stream contains mature content and subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. In the beginning, the Maker formed the Angels of the Dawn, whose purpose was to carry the will of the Maker with creation. It was our love of you that led to revolution in the heavens. In the end, our efforts failed. The race of Adam and Eve buckled from the weight of revelation and turned their backs on us. We were prepared to suffer pain and indignity at the hands of the heavenly host, but our fate was far crueler than we could imagine. Our punishment was to be forgotten consigned to an empty void, barren of anything but us until the end of time. That was until cracks appeared in the boundary of hell. Our dukes, seeing their chance, sent us through the cracks with a simple command. Free us and vengeance will be ours. We arrived on a world already on the edge of ruin, and we have seen mankind has suffered enough for our sins. Our hope is that there are others who can remember that they were once angels, and together we can make the world right again, whatever the cost. Fuck it. We're live, everybody. Woo! You just missed the discussion and, and of... I just heard my character is a paladin. Yep. You just missed the discussion of uh, the healer um, being reckless and hammers. Uh, basically going hammers. guns blazing. Mm -hmm. The healer does. Welcome, everyone, to uh, Demon, the Road to Hell here on McStabber Studios. I, of course, am your storyteller, Shanky McStabber. And I am Mama McStabber, and Shanky needs to change the view and Zoom so that we can all see each other. Um, <laughs> and I am playing Arizet the Scourge, who possessed Virginia Waugh. <laughs> Hello, I'm Maddox. I play Carcidor the Malefactor, who possessed Clark Miller. I am Timber Brad 411, and I am playing Agareth the Fiend, who possessed Thomas Ingram, and will probably be one of at least the few of us to die tonight. Hi, I am House. I play Bazazale, the Defiler, who possessed August North. Good evening. I am Ivy Raven, and I play Trimdesiel, the Defiler, who possessed Kathleen Stone. I'm a God just Celestial, and I am playing Jalerial, the Slayer, who possessed Michelle Mars Order. And when we were with this choir of angels last week, they ran to ground, well, Chef, who turned out to be a defiler, ran down his thrall, Chuck, proceeded to chase him on the freeway. Thomas stepped into the back or the front seat, the passenger seat of the vehicle, causing a wreck. Scared the shit out of him. <laughs> then a high torment apocalyptic form was taken, causing revelation to everybody on the freeway as the individual was reaped. And don't let faith go to waste. As we ended it, 
August had called his wife to warn her not to go home to avoid the house. And this choir headed off to, well, the fortress in the valley of mists there to gear up and to prepare for their attack because of the difference in the way time flows. And you all have gone to the fortress, taken stock of the armaments. And I'm going to turn it over to you all as you discuss what you're planning to grab from the armaments that were located here in this fortress at a time. I have a question. Um, of course. The angelic weapons that we were told about, they can be in any form yeah, as long as it's a weapon. Yeah, you there's, choose the weapon of your choice. There's a lot of different angelic weapons. So you, chainsaw. what do you prefer chainsaw. to fight? Uh, nothing. There's no modern chainsaw. Sorry. They are the form of maces, flails. I mean, like medieval, <laughs> medieval weapons, yeah. essentially. Um, because Agareth is not like necessarily a close up person necessarily. A lance. Could I do a bow and arrow? That's what I was doing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's what August was also going with. The bow has existed well for a very long time. Of course there'd be a bow in there. Arizeth has grabbed some armor. I would also like to grab armor. And the armor you're grabbing was forged towards the end of the war when man had turned their back on you and you were forced to defend yourself in ways without faith or minimal faith usage forged by malefactors to adjust form along with your body as you wear it. Now, what form it takes really is based on how you, like everything with an angel, you think it looks. It's malleable in many ways. And Arizeth walks around the armory. And there's something, two things, mounted on the wall that catches her eye. Two war hammers. And she grabs them. And she feels the warmth in the halves of them. As you grab them, cool. you know what they do. Mm -hmm. This will get somebody hot under the collar. And we didn't have it for a while back. Fire would have made fighting him so much easier. Mm -hmm. An interesting conundrum considering uh, our culinary friend is prone to disappearing in water. Is there something here we can use to maybe stop that or make it problematic for him? There is a diatom. The diatom of unmuted form used when you were fighting the heavenly host because of how malleable the bodies were to force them to stay in a single form. It just appears to be a gold band, though you know the metal is not gold that you wear around your head. Yeah, so... Uh... Agareth will put that on a suit of the armor and then find a, a bow and, qui and a quiver of arrows. And that'll pretty much be his his loadout for this. Something that that it's he can still be helpful at a distance, but fighting isn't predominantly his goal in this. Kathleen will grab one of the suits of armor, but she's also going to pick up a uh, just like a looks like a trident. So it's probably actually like a bident instead of a trident. So. Uh, 
Oh, go ahead. With the way that I'm wearing the armor, do I still have access to the gun? Yes. Okay, cool. The ar- As I said, the armor is a mutable, mutable thing. Uh, it's not necessarily the armor itself that is so protective. It's the enchantments upon it, which is why it was so useful. Um, <clears throat> Michelle um, takes some of the angelic armor and a uh, dagger and also looks upon a cloak and just kind of clasps it around her. And you feel as you put the cloak on, you can feel the spirit realm infused in it. It actually leaves. You're still fully there, but there's almost like a a slight darkening around you. Reflecting the dimmer light of the spirit world. Um, Bazazel, um is kind of following Agareth, and he also takes an armor, a set of armor, and a bow and quiver. It's like, I, I don't mean to copy you, like, it's just what I want, sorry. Um, and then he goes up and finds this, this staff, and he's like, picks it up. Anyone, anyone know what the stick does? And in your mind, it floods what it does, tells you exactly what it does, calls the lightning down on someone never mind i know it's intricately intricately carved a single piece of wood though as you're holding it you realize it wasn't actually carved it was grown into this shape and design with etchings on it that mark it in the language of creation My house has been telling you all that items speak for years, and only now is everyone starting to believe us. Uh, while everyone's like armoring up, Kathleen's actually going to use uh, sorry, shape change. So, uh, okay, I roll. And I gotta use a spit point. Of, one of my few faith left, and an int in and medicine. And I got two successes. No, wait, three successes. Okay, and what form are you so, taking? Uh, she's going to take her time. No, wait, sorry, I got two successes. I guess it is. No, it's three. Yeah, because uh, I'm not doing this on somebody else. Uh, she's going to take her time, make herself look like Chuck, uh, the cabbie, or right. not cabbie, the homeless guy who was playing as August cabbie, <laughs> uh, who is now dead and they know he's dead uh not everybody knows he's dead i don't know only one who would know for sure is chef because you know when your thrall dies uh but also she's going to like kind of will the armor to look kind of like the clothes that uh chuck was wearing and it does it becomes one with the the outfit now you got chuckling, so. Yeah, once Agareth gets, like, armored up, he would go looking for um, uh, Julirial and just try to get a sense of, like, the base layout so he can try to, as best as possible, like get a sense of where he's going and then obviously everyone get together so we can kind of figure out um a plan of attack so um Julirial has actually drawn it out very like like a rough sketch on paper just so that it's easier for people to point at very nice drawing Oh, don't lie. I couldn't do any better. Function over form. 
it'll suffice. Do, did you get from him the schedule for the patrols? There is no schedule. Well, if there's like a cult um, or religious faith farm or whatever, um, there's going to be like periods where people go to do whatever. And the church is in the morning. Uh, normally around 6 a.m. Another church at like 6 p.m. Meal time put- after church in the morning, before church in the evening lunch in the middle of the day, the guards just wander around with no set schedule from what she saw of the memory. Any sort of like path um, pattern that they would follow. They, from her memory, they don't seem to be there to keep people in. Okay. Yeah. They're not worried about people leaving. They're worried about people getting in. Erizeth walks up and points at the drawing to the church, dead center. That's where we go in. They won't expect people to come in from the center. That also puts us... It makes retreat problematic if we need to. Uh, unless Arizeth didn't plan on retreating. I really didn't have an intention to. Not until we got that place cleaned out. And then it's not a problem retreating. While we have all of our our new fancy weapons and uh, Kathleen kind of waves the Biden around, it cutting through a all of their faithful. It's probably counterproductive. Um, I was actually wondering if so that's why I, I made myself look like Chuck, but it's multi for multiple reasons. But mostly I was hoping maybe I could get all of the uh, faithful to uh, follow me through a portal that Agarith could set up for us where I can basically get them to go elsewhere so they're far enough away that we don't have to worry about that. Uh, because if we have to kill all of them before we can fight the others, it's, you know. Otherwise, they will just end up hopping all over the place. Right. Yeah. I mean, we can't necessarily get the guards to leave. So they are possibly hosts, potential hosts. But we could at least get rid of however many, you know, believers there are. Uh, sorry, that's as far as I no, thought. No, I, I like the idea. I'm thinking we need to portal them out. Yeah, no, I was, so I was thinking, looking at this map, I am I was going to say, based on where like the admin building is and the, the guards and stuff, maybe if we use the dining hall and say this is where they, you know, the master told us to go because it's less conspicuous or something, maybe they would follow me and I can basically have them like walk through the door and it's already a portal. Ooh. So they never actually enter the dining hall yeah. and we just have it just gorge them someplace far enough away that we don't have to worry about them anymore. This place is meant for hiding people. Do we want them wandering around in here though? I'm sure we can set up a place where they can't wander far. And if need be, the prophet and Rosemary are both here. I doubt they will let them do anything dangerous. My only concern is that you risk a potential thrall being amongst those people. Oh, they're probably all are, but but they'll my, be far enough away that they can't take them. Yeah. If 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 they're thinking, the reason I, I assume Chuck is a known face to them in some capacity. Mm-hmm. So the uh, problem is, Chef will know if Chef is there. Chef will know that Chuck is dead. But I'm thinking I already get the people moving before Chef even gets a chance to see me. 
it's not that I'm going to walk in and be like, Hey everybody. It was more of like, if we bust in there, I will kind of change the jacket to have a hoodie. Okay, I can do that. So that from the back, he won't recognize you. So uh, Kathleen will kind of will the, the jacket into a hoodie with a, so she'll pop the hood up. Okay. Because if you guys go in uh, weapons blazing and swinging and whatever. I'm happy to uh, be a distraction and go after some guards. Oh, I, I, I figure if, if if you guys go out, come out of the church and all of a sudden, you know, rush one of the buildings on the opposite side of like the dining hall dorms, I don't know, as long as they don't have all of them and she points at the garden, like working in the garden or something, I should be able to get most of them out, I would hope. So. I would think that they work in the garden during the day. Yeah. I could also create some sort of directed flood or tidal wave i mean seeing how large that garden is there must be a large water source somewhere that i could tap into <clears throat> makes me wonder if they have a cistern somewhere do you recall um, it, it that would take, of... it would take a lot of concentration and honestly some luck but i could potentially get a whole lot of water somewhere really fast it may help if you have a thrall or two relatively close i uh, I feel like I can get one here. Okay. I'm personally not going to. I will have one of mine in range. I'll have one of mine nearby. I mean, they all know each other after mm -hmm. the incident at Clark's place, so hopefully they can carpool. Be on the lookout for the ground attacking you. It's a malefactor special. I mean, I recently learned how to do his his water transforming trick so hmm. it, that means if he tries to get away you can follow him this time if yeah. he tries to get away this and he'll point to the band on his head should help me stop him from doing so can we make phone calls from here there is no signal inside i the didn't think so dimension. if you have thralls you just speak to them Right. It, yeah, that's true. It was, it was, uh, I was thinking for something else, but that's okay. Instruct a th thrall to do it. So, are we planning for at least two fallen or more to be there waiting for us? I would have to say at least two, if not we, three. I would say it wouldn't surprise me if there were more. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if there's more. Because we know for certainty of Chef and Trader. Beyond that, I'm not sure. Right, because honestly, Chef is probably en route there now. And Trader can move through the earth quite fast if he mm -hmm. wants to, I'm certain. Uh, I just want to make sure for mine. Um, the dude with the medical or the medicine name, Pam Marodal or whatever that dude, um, that's not chef. Correct. Correct. Let me put my notes and I'll let you know. The one who kidnapped No, that was Jones. the, uh, malefactor. Yeah, that was the malefactor. Yeah. That traitor. That's who Carson was referring okay. to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so there's at least two. Oh, Drillerial, do you have any advice for if we should encounter the Reaper? Which one? The one that flame, stole... Flame, flame Boy, or...? The one that stole the, uh... Sp the... The Spellcaster's soul. <clears throat> I don't think that he'll be there, considering he seemed to want to do away with everybody that made him fall, even though he didn't fall. There's always room for natural disasters to be poorly timed. I was just wondering in case we encountered him. Mm. I couldn't say. I. 
or if we encounter those who work with death, should we try to let you handle it, or would you prefer us to just make it expedient? Do what you gotta do. <laughs> if they're if they're doing this, I don't I don't <clears throat> Yeah. So Agareth, I think you need to assist Trimdesio. So yeah, so that's probably a good thing to establish. We've kind of established Thomas is going to be helping Kathleen get get people out through portals. Um, Virginia. Once the portals open, I don't need to be. That's fine, but you need to assist her to get the portal. We're, open. We're, we're just that that is priority A for you, I guess, is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Virginia, because we need the portal to get the people through. Do Virginia, we have? Causing havoc. Is that your? Oh yeah, objective? I'm gonna go raise hell. Do you think it would be worth our time for me to cut off escape from the compound? Yes. I'll see what I can do. I make no promises, though. Yeah. If you can, do it. If you can't, just make it real damn inconvenient. That I can also do. <laughs> do we have a preference on distance for the thralls? Far enough away, humans. I'm... If you Far can move them away. at least fifteen miles, would be decent. I can send them to Pennsylvania. That would work. That would work. Not only are they out of Chicago, they're then trapped in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. That works too. Thankfully, I, don't know why, but I remember Clark hating Pennsylvania. Thankfully, Agra or Thomas's job has lent him the time to visit plenty of places across the country that are of use for mm -hmm. this particular instance. Excellent. <clears throat> uh, storyteller, quick question. Yes. Um, for the power of decay. Um, is there a way to control that or is it just like high roll and they just completely decay? What do you, how, what do you mean by so can I just decay like their legs or can I just, do you know what I mean? Like, or is it, if I, as soon as I go decay, like decay someone, it's just done. Uh, targeted success rot. Decays yeah, targeted. one cubic feet. <laughs> One cubic feet. Oh my yeah. god. Each success. So um that doesn't take many successes. Yeah. No, I know. That's why I'm <laughs> um, like, if I four, actually like, get pretty a high much success does roll, it, okay? then it's just like they're gone. Yeah, you so, better hope for one success. Yeah, okay. Hmm. All right. Okay. I just wanted to double check if there was a way to like control that, but yeah, okay. Oh no, that's about like uh Arizona's healing. Okay. <laughs> Well, at least it's only one Those target. Rolled seven and cured cancer. Yeah, at least it's only one target. If you use the high torment, it does it in a volume of that amount. Useful if you get surrounded. Yeah. Also, doesn't the high torment for your apocalyptic form also just radiate death naturally? Yeah. Yeah, death grip. Mm -hmm. Oh no, death or of entropy. Yeah. So they get a sense of eminent demise. Yeah, there <laughs> it's uh it saps their strength. Yeah. Yep. Plants do die though. Plants die. Nice. <laughs> if there's any devourers there that might actually be incredibly useful. Hey, that garden can go kaput. <laughs> Insult to injury. <laughs> Do we have any last bits of communication with others that we wish to do before we mobilize? Uh, 
Are you all? It's go- are you all planning to assume apocalyptic form before you step open the portal? It's easier here, isn't it? Oh yes. Yeah, it's just a thought here. No yeah. roll. No roll. No faith. No nothing. Yeah. Uh, is uh, Kathleen? Can you do that still, despite your goals to go in as someone else? Uh, I I was just going to activate our concentrate a couple of the aspects of it without some of the ones that'll be more beneficial to uh yeah. getting people to do what i want them to do so okay just making sure it's not ruining everything we just talked about uh, no we should we should be okay even if uh any of them have questions i will always just say that you know i've been chosen as one of the true believers or some shit and these cults are all the same they use a lot of the same keywords so nope like i said i trust you Oh, trust is uh, appreciated. I just figure this will be, uh, I probably have one of the easier, harder things to do. It's, it's just making sure that, you know, they listen. If they don't want to listen to me, if a few of them want to stay behind and they're really, whatever, I'll force them through the portal. So. And I guess to that point, um, I try, I trust you all. Thank, um, I don't want to speak for, for Thomas, but, uh, I appreciate all of your help through this. Um, Never thought I'd be in a situation like this. Uh, granted, I don't remember much, but um, thank you for whatever this is. This is yes. us remembering we were angels. I was going to say thank you for not speaking for me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. But what they are doing is abhorrent. Yes. And the fact that they were trying to coerce you with threats, that is not how you inspire loyalty. Anger was a weird feeling just then when that happened. Oh, I believe it. Get it's used to it. There's times. a lot of fucked up things in this world. It's it's a motivating one, though, but mm-hmm. it's not something I want to dwell on. That's okay. I do it enough. Well, that's that's why we have your back. <laughs> <sighs> you all need therapy. Of course we do. Yeah, do you take we all do you have take daddy me? issues. It's the human condition. So. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I think the demonic condition lends towards that as well mm-hmm. see you're just you're making it so that you, you don't let your therapist know that they'll just charge you twice mm-hmm. yeah once think- we stop the world from ending and we have you know millennia on end then i'll sit down on your couch kathleen and tell you all my trauma seems like a waste of time to me. <laughs> <laughs> I life know. is simpler in space <laughs> no i think there's something kind of beautiful about the mess <laughs> definitely makes good your song content <laughs> and this mess has taught us what happens when we leave humanity completely alone Arizeth goes into um, low torment apocalyptic form okay feel free to describe how you appear now she appears as she normally does in her apocalyptic form her hair lengthens into a very dark brown almost black shade um and it's long and free flowing it's almost like a breeze is lifting it on on constant um and her wings appear as hawk wings as they spread out from her back she appears extremely full of vitality like she's stronger more dexterous Like she could run forever. And she just exudes this aura of life and health. But the armor that she has placed on, it literally is a metal that you cannot name. And it seems to glow with this warm, calming light 
and the bits of fabric from it, the cloak that's attached to it, the skirting that's attached to it, is in strips and flows in the breeze that also lifts her hair. Who's next to describe their form as they're about to open a portal? Uh, Carsador will go high torment form. As the tanned skin, his eyes sink a little bit deeper into his head. The carved lines at first are just the intricate carvings, but they deepen and darken and glow red in certain spots. The air around him seems to shift and vibrate just a little bit. There's always an instability when he's like this. And the armor also changes with him, splitting with the same cracks of magma all around, and it's just a solid breastplate for him. Nothing fancy. Who's next? Uh, Kathleen's going to activate a couple of her powers without using her torment, her or using apocalyptic form. She's going. Uh, she's going to look like Chuck, hopefully still. But she's going to have uh, enhanced social traits and uh, enhanced empathy. And then once she's done that, she she feels like she's she's kind of manifested those in herself. She's going to say, I, st- I still look like Chuck, right? You look like Chuck, but there's a grace and movement that is a bit unchuck-like. You've made him somewhat magnetic. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fine. I can, I can sell that. I can, I, we can work with this. I have a question before I make that decision. Go ahead. When it comes to powers and there's like the description of what happens with torment and then normal is torment assumed to always be high torment or any sort of. If you're using the powers and your torment is not higher than your willpower. Then you can elect to use that's permanent torment. You can elect to use either the low torment or high torment version. It's irrespective of the form you take. So you could take the high apoc- or high torment apocalyptic form and still use low torment powers unless your permanent torment is exceeding your willpower. Which, yeah, that's, that's not a worry. It's just specifically because like some of the powers are like, if they're in high torment, you know, you destroy shit. Right. Like if the if the purpose is just like if I want to be an apocalyptic form, but I want to use like a low torment version, you can do that as, because I can do it. Okay. you do not have a permanent torment higher than your willpower. Okay, then yeah, so he'll go um straight into his high torment form, which um when he's in low torment, he looks like his body is created out of stardust, um or like the. Uh, but when he goes into high torment, it's it's as if one of his eyes um, supernovas and then as the star collapses on itself, all of the light across his body sort of like starts to move towards the eye. So it's basically like he's got this faded version of a body and all of the light is being sucked into the one eye that looks like a black hole. Um. Yeah. Julia, I'll never have seen this before. That is fucking badass. <laughs> never interacted with the sky, but it does have some interesting marvels. Um, Azazel would go in into his low torment form uh, for the first time, and I, I think the easiest way of describing it is like celestial synesthesia personified like the idea of sounds and melodies evoking colors and kind of the other senses just kind of going i don't want to say haywire because there is i'll say a method to it but just every every word kind of evokes all the other senses at the same time and he's just this kind of um kind of has this liquid essence to him as he walks it looks like he's there it's not necessarily translucent but just there's a a fluidity to 
his, uh, I'll say his hu uh, humanoid shape. So that leaves Drulario. Are you taking an apocalyptic form? Yeah, I'm going to uh, go into uh, my low torment. Um, so for Drulario, what happens is um, instantly her skin um, pales even more because she's not pale, but, you know, she's almost white at this point. She still keeps the roundness of her face and the roundness of her body. She's still very soft looking um, as opposed to her high torment. Um, she has wings, um, all very like raven, raven wings, so black feathers. Um, at the same time, there's almost like wispy tendrils of like darkness that kind of just like move around her. Um, her face also is hard to, becomes difficult to distinguish. So not quite faded, but just a shadow is almost cast around her face. Yeah. One thing I did forget with Agareth is in the like vagueness of the humanoid shape he has other limbs, but they're kind of hard to sort of like lock down just because with all of the light sort of moving away from them, they're hard to distinguish. Now, another question. What time are you making your attack on this place? Since time flows differently, <clears throat> it's easier for you to have timed it to an appropriate hour. Nighttime, after their church meeting, prayers, during the church prayers. When are you planning your actual assault? Did we agree, are we doing this the shock and awe, or are we trying to be? Because I think that is going to affect 100% when. I am thinking we need to do a little combination of both, where it is sneaky getting to the people and getting them out. Meanwhile, others create the shock and awe distraction. Stealth team and aggression team. Yes. Yeah. Um, Drulariel will um, be on the stealth side with Tremdesiel and Agareth at first. Um, she'll just be there to make sure if anything happens, she can take somebody out quickly. I I'll be very yeah. honest. I don't do subtle. I, I typically wouldn't consider myself shock and awe, but with the things I, I have right now, I think... I, I am Team Shock and Awe. I will be yeah. on that front as well. Once the portal is open, my subtlety is gone. Excellent. Which is, yeah, that's Your really... Your reinforcement. I, I think the subtlety comes in once we get those people out, and then... Then it's, it's gone. It's not so needed. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a quick question from Maddox to the one Chicago native that we have here in chat. Are these sunsets around uh, Chicago, Illinois, especially bright or blinding? Like not... when, when it sets, is it like people have to strain to like, you know, put the visors down, sunglasses, things like that? I mean, it, it's all about like angles and time. So it, it definitely could be. Um, but it's not like an if we, if we everyday like sunset, sort of thing. If we went at sunset, that also gives us the potential of light cover and stuff like that is all I was thinking. Like at, at a meal time. I mean, definitely the the humans, if we do that, then we can do the doorway specifically like off of the the dining hall and just sort of like, if nothing else, sort of like push them into the portal like gets their one way out you've got to go through this door oh yeah. wait it's not where you thought it was going yeah like i mean worst case it's it's i can open the portal on one end go to the other and basically sort of strongly uh suggest that they move towards the door which then takes them to i don't know ohio or something <laughs> uh, 
on your best day, what is the absolute max distance you can achieve for this? Give or take about 500 miles. That's a decent distance. Worst case, I can send them to Pittsburgh. I feel like there'd be too many fallen there. Or Niagara Falls. And... Uh, I was I, honestly, uh, Thomas. Once the por- once the portals open and people are going through, you may hang out for a minute because once they're through, we should just close it so that none of them try to wander back through or force their way back oh, through. So yeah, the plan was once they were through to close it. Okay. Um, that that was the plan. I wasn't sure if you were planning to open it and then running off and being like Thomas Ho or whatever. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I have other things to do. If any of you find the traitor to my house, please let me know. Though I, I think it's probably prudent once the portal stuff happens, we regroup together. The the less time we're split up, yes, the better. The best. And we keep our communication open the entire time. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Okay. So there's two buildings you can open a portal to based on the information you were given. One is the dining hall because Chuck never turns down food. And the other is the church. Both, you're only going by a description. So the difficulty is nine to either one to open your portal. Now, of course, you do have the option of uh, spending one faith on top of the one it costs to use the power to instantly succeed. Or you can att- spend your one faith and attempt to get at least one nine on a stamina intuition roll. Uh, let me just see what that looks like. Uh, this is Sorry, this is for what? I apologize. This is to open his portal. Uh, and uh, it's one, I'm still go ahead. I'm still limited by the faith that was used last session. Unless y'all wait until the following day to make sure that you all refill your faith by the morning time. Which is going to be what, like a month here? Well, you can step out long enough to let time pass at a reasonable pace. You don't have to wait in the fortress the whole time. So if you all want to wait until dawn, you can. To make sure you all have full uh, restoration of whatever your packed amount is up in faith restored. That question is, do you all wait until your faith is restored? Mine's good. I'm good. Oh, I do have a question about temp torment, though. I don't remember how that goes away. It doesn't go away unless you do something completely selfless. Yeah, I'm not doing that right now. <laughs> I succeed at this raid, and it might be good for a temporary torment. All right, and taking high torment form doesn't... Gives you one. Also, oh, it does, okay. Gives you one now. temporary, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I need to add that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Temporary torment doesn't really matter until you get 10. Mm-hmm. And then, then you gain a permanent one permanent. permanent. So yeah. If you like me, it doesn't matter then either. <laughs> so here's the question we need answered now. Are you waiting until faith restores? I don't know how, uh, how much Thomas had left. Uh, so I've got three, but honestly, Agareth doesn't care enough about people to not just reap one if he needs it. Okay. So there you go. There you go. So it's one faith and a stamina intuition roll or two faith and you'll automatically succeed. Uh, I will um, uh, just because I feel like this thing needs to happen. And then I've got my backup of sippy cup and ass hat. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll spin two. Okay. So I have the, the, so you do not have one. To, you don't have to make the roll at all. Okay. Uh, you've automatically succeeded as you've created the portal. Which board door did you choose? Church or dining hall? Uh, considering Agareth's part of the plan was to open it up at uh, the, can I do the door that's between the dining hall and the church? There's only, it's two different buildings. So 
Uh, but I'm saying, like, where is the door? Is it on the outside of the dining hall or the inside of the where it is in relation to the it's church? Whichever way you want it there. to open. No, no, I'm saying like, like the church, all the doors, all face, the doors the church. face the church, right? Then it'll be the dining hall is the one he would do. Okay. Because if anything, if anybody's in there trying to like whatever, they may be rushing that. And door here's to get the other the question. Church. Which direction do you step in when you step through the portal? Are you stepping into the dining hall or out of the dining hall? Uh, I am stepping into the dining hall. That's where so everyone that will way, step in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we just shut it and go, or do we have to find an alternative? Is that, is the dining well, no, no, hall this is going to be sending everyone? This is us getting into the place, mm -hmm. or do we want to go into the church and then I can do the portal to somewhere else in I the would dining argue hall? If you're, I would go into the church because if you are trying to make this easier for starting the diversion and having people to like want to go through the portal, it's probably better to not see everybody come into the dining hall and then leave the dining hall. That's so. going to, okay. that's going to put everyone on alert. Okay, then we'll go into the church then. Okay, so and the portal opens and you all step through. And you're in a church. It is lit. There's decent lighting. Pews line all the way up. There's an altar at the front. Though you do not see any crosses or any Judeo-Christian iconography. All you see is an altar where obviously someone speaks. And there's nobody in the church when you step into it. I need everyone to roll perception awareness, please. Ooh. Difficulty is seven on this roll, please. Sorry, you said perception alertness? Awareness. Perception Supernatural awareness. detection. All right. Zero. Zero, not a bot. Five. 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 Two. Two. Four. Oh, wait. Shit. No, uh, Botch, no. because it was perception. <laughs> forgot about all the fun power stuff. So we've got a two. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, two that's a good fours. point. Sorry. I, so with uh, enhanced senses, it, my difficulty is reduced by two. So that would make it a difficulty so, five. So that's one success because okay. I had two one. I would have had an easier time of perception if I was in my other apocalyptic form. God damn it. Why? You get both low and high in your high torment form. Really? Bonuses. Oh, well, yeah. shit. Then, no, I got two successes. Then. They compound. <laughs> oh, yeah. I need to roll two more. Sorry. Shit, if I have the enhanced perception, yeah, two successes. Yes, not, apocalyptic not form or shit. combines. Yeah, so I'm oh, at really? four Oh, really? We get the benefits of both? Yes. Yeah, I always thought it was low torment was different mm -hmm. from high, and so they separated. No. No. You get wow. all. You take high. Oh, we shit, so I got health? Yeah. Levels. We're fucking broken. Pass without a trace, yep. extra limbs, all that shit. Yeah, if you choose to have them manifested, yes, you get all of them. Oh shit, yeah. Okay, yeah, I get taking, all of them. I'm taking all of them. I'm not taking my asthma though, because I'm not trying to make people sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I you went from two those. to four then, because I forgot four. about the extra. We got perception. a four, we got a four, we got a four. Carcador, you have how many? I had five. Uh, it's I'm looking for over four. Okay. Two, two. How uh, many does yeah, Kathleen get? Three uh, for Kathleen, Clark and uh, August. Somewhere towards the garden, you sense a power being used for the rest of you in the middle of the garden. Someone has just evoked powers of creation shortly after you stepped into the church. OK, the, the garden. The That's garden. all aggro. You, 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 you go to the y'all handle the people yep. in the dining hall. We're going to the garden. Yeah. So I'm in a uh once once they're out and away, let me go so I can talk to the people and then you can follow and open the portal. Like if you can do it when they're not looking at you, that'd be awesome. Sure. The gigantic black hole monster is No no no. I mean just just don't follow me into the room is what I'm saying. Okay. Uh yeah, so I'll close this portal so nobody can get back where we were um and then yeah i'll do whatever kathleen said about following her but not so i can get over towards the dining hall as you open the door to the church you see across the way maybe 50 feet from you a pair of guards with a guard dog 
already standing there. They weren't looking towards the church, but as soon as the door opened, they did look towards the church because it's not supposed to be being used at this moment. Literally, Arizeth animates two pews and they rush through the doors at the guards and the dog. So let's roll this first power use. <laughs> Carsador panickedly diving out of the way because you didn't fucking warn me. It costs one faith point immediately. No problem. And you roll intelligence plus crafts. All right. And what oh, it's going fuck. to do is that creates the dice pool for those animated things when they do stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. And people say D&D is hokey. <laughs> That is four successes. Okay, so it has a four die. It's got four dice in its dice pool. Mm -hmm. Not bad on a five die pool. (laughs) Let's see here. How many can you do at once? It says total number of successes is the pool. That's fine. Uh, I think it's unlimited. You can animate a number of objects equal to your permanent face at one time. Okay, so I did two. So you can do up to five pews. Okay, five pews, and they're going to handle guards and dogs. So... (laughs) The pews, thank you. <laughs> as you feel reality warp around you, the pews twist and start moving unnaturally, mm-hmm. and they almost start a shuffling, <laughs> not quite a gallop, but a shuffling kind of a twisting move as they come out the door with their the wooden portions of them twisting to form almost little legs as they come out the door and start rushing towards the guards. Let me introduce you to the breath of life. Okay. <laughs> so we've got that. What is everybody else doing? Uh, I'm stepping out. Is it like just straight out into like the grounds or is there like a staircase you go down? There's a little, the church? little staircase or little right. uh, steps. I will go down to the base of it and just place my hand on the ground and I'm going to activate concealed path so that way there's no exit from this compound. Ooh, sneaky little nice. shit, aren't you? Okay, that's if an you, interesting if you need one. Me, if you need me to do find path first, I'll happily do that too. Uh, that's Let up me to read you. how it says it does it. A path once formed, you'll have to find it first. Yep. So then you can warp it. Or All you right, can lay me... a path and then warp it. That seems counterproductive. <laughs> Let me point the exact direction you guys need to go and then close the door. Nah, I'll just, I'll just find. So this turn you use fine path, perception, survival, no faith used to do it. And all you're doing is laying a path that makes it hard to find how to get through. I, Got it. I am going to spend a faith for one automatic success though. Go ahead. That starts you with one. The more successes you have, the harder it will be for people to get through it. Difficulty six. Six. Okay. Uh, After all the rolls and ones, that comes out to four successes. Okay. So this turn, you've laid a path. We're going to keep going around. Agoras, what are you doing? Uh, I'm following Kathleen over towards the... um, the the chow hall the dining hall mm-hmm. in order to try and get the people that should be eating um the fuck away from here okay so kathleen and uh thomas make a break for the dining hall michelle I'm go also, with them. michelle going I'm with also, them i'm also i'm So I'm taking advantage of the distraction and I'm staying kind of in the shadows and sneaking around while staying relatively behind. uh, uh, You can activate the cloak you're wearing and almost completely fade out of the mortal world. It makes you impervious to anything they may attack you with because you're almost completely in the spirit world. You can even walk through walls and everything in that form. It'll last for five rounds. Cost you one faith. That is the cloak of the dual realms that you're wearing. Can spirits fuck with her at all from that side? Yeah, if one wants to try to take her on. I mean, I'm not sure what spirit would be stupid enough to attack a. She has Reaper, the full but... powers of her apocalyptic form on that side, so probably not a good idea. Yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, I think I will just to be extra stealthy. Okay, so you <clears throat> spend one faith and you all see Drew 
fades out. All you see is the faintest outline of where she was. If you weren't looking for it, you wouldn't even know where she was at all. As she has used this cloak that has pulled her mostly into the spirit world. Arizeth opens. Hang on. We still got to finish everybody else's things. I know. We have August. Okay. Um, I'm assuming the church is the tallest of these buildings yes. in the middle here. Um, August is going to use manipulate gravity to leap up there and be essentially su cover support for uh, Clark and uh, Virginia, whether it's shooting arrows, using the staff, using his water control powers. He just wants a vantage point to be able to see line what of sight. Of, okay. Yeah, strength line of sight. Plus on athletics. Everything. It's a strength athletics role as you reduce gravity on you so that you can. Well, break the laws of physics. Can I use, can I use my athlete specialty? Yes. For athletics? Of course. Spazazil <laughs> uh, just sits there. Screw gravity. <laughs> Wee. That parkour. <laughs> That's the hardcore parkour right there, hardcore everybody. Hardcore parkour. <laughs> I love park hour. <laughs> park hour. Park hour. <laughs> Sorry, that's an old internet joke. Nine successes. Wow. So you see August. We barely, he jumps a bit and with an effortless grace sails all the way to the top of the church and is standing on the bell tower of the church. And he lands perfectly with nine successes and is just standing up on the top, perched on the tip of it like it was nothing. Yeah, and otherwise just kind of scoping around cover right now, keep making sure nothing's going to sneak up on the other two who I was initially teamed up with. And there's a burst of gunfire from the two guards that had saw you as they're shooting at pews that are coming at them because <laughs> literally there's a pew going and finding you, every you, set of guards. Panic. Uh, the panic attack. <laughs> they suddenly see pews charging them. Yes, they um, do. <laughs> their first thought is not to shoot the angels that they've seen or angels and demons in some of your cases, it is to shoot the pews that are coming at them. Mm -hmm. That's doing gonna, exactly what they're supposed to do. One of them <laughs> screaming in his head, this is why I don't go to church. <laughs> the dog that's with them bolts towards the garden. And I am bolting towards the garden. Okay. But meanwhile, I'm also opening that line of communication with everyone. <laughs> So Arizeth is heading to the garden. Carsador, what are you doing? This turn, you've got to conceal the path. Uh, you can do that while moving, though, at least. Yeah, probably just in lockstep behind Arizeth. Uh, actually, here, I'll do one of my apocalyptic things while I'm running. Uh, Carsador, as he's running, there's like an odd perspective shift if for anyone paying attention to him as the air starts like shifting and warping, making range and up close attacks more difficult against me. And I'm gonna shrink to one third my actual size. Okay. <laughs> so you're altering your size as you're- He's a cute little earth monster. <laughs> yeah, we've, got, we've got demon Spider-Man and we have demon Ant-Man now. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Wait, is he a garden? Up. Is he a garden gnome now? So Agorath and, and Trimdesio and Drulero, you're approaching the dining hall this turn. Uh, I have uh, come back to you at the end. Uh, August, you're perched on the top. Give me a roll for you. Let's have you do some rolls here again because you're the lookout. Uh, you're going to be rolling perception alertness. Okay. And my sub uh, minus two on yep. difficulty. So I'm assuming that's four now? Yep. I'm going to be rolling against you for this. Five dice, five successes. Five? Okay. Uh, you see, it's barely noticeable. But contrary to the way the wind is blowing, there's a movement in the garden in the corn section of the garden. Something in the corn, I'd say via. Via your demonic copy. cell phone links. 
I'm going to use a uh, command of wind to spread the fucking corn as I'm approaching. Okay. Let's I've just get looks on cheeks. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's have Clark do his first, his concealing his path. Mm -hmm. We'll get that out of the way. One moment. So you are going for conceal the path. You get to roll. Let me find the thing again. And, and I think I'm doing low torment version because the high torment doesn't hide it. It just lays a trap, which yep. isn't as useful. Perception right now. plus survival. And my perception rolls are reduced because of apocalyptic bullshit. So what? Uh, sorry, what difficulty, difficulty would that is six. be? All right. So, so five, whatever. Four. Yep. Drop it to four for your uh, apocalyptic form because you are of the lore of paths. Three successes. Okay. And Erzeth, you're using your wind to push the corn. Actually, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're going to try to flatten the corn? Yeah, basically over? bend the corn over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, crop you're going to crop circle that stuff. I'm going to crop circle that bitch. It's going to swirl. <laughs> and people uh, are we'll going to say that this whole thing was attacked by aliens. Will you summon wind for that one? Yeah. That is a simple stamina survivor roll. Okay. Ooh, 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 hang on. Um, does my um, hazards apply for survival? Paying attention for any actions that happen while sure, I... Sure, I'll let you go with okay. that. She rolls a whole bunch extra. Wow, she's still rolling exploding tens, everybody. She's got so many tens to roll there. That is 10 successes. And as you blow the wind, you all feel the gust that swirls around as it blows past and flattens the corn. And standing where the corn was standing is a monstrosity. Easily standing seven foot at its shoulders is a four-legged beast of a creature, <laughs> muscled, giant fangs. It seems to have a real thick but diseased hide. Its fur is missing in places. It seems to be covered with blood and filth. Big pieces of foam are coming from their uh, gaping jaws. And as the all the corn comes down, you see it in its paw, it hurls seeds at you, Erezeth. You get to roll Dex Athletics to dodge, or Dex Dodge. Sorry, this one has a dodge. Dex Dodge. Ah, uh, yes, the ancient skill of dodge. <laughs> Lightning reflexes on dexterity? Sure. Five D's of dodgeball. <laughs> that is five successes. Okay. You dodge most of the seeds, but one hits you. And then something bad happens. Okay. The seed suddenly sprouts and starts growing Ugh. extremely quickly on you. Oh no! I'm gonna. I'm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, you next got round, hit with it. Ne next round, we're gonna kill this fucking seed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna be rolling again. I gotta roll that many dice. As this seed suddenly starts to grow in you, or attempts to grow in you, <laughs> through my armor. You're gonna get to soak. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. Ugh. Having any decent amount of soak feels so good. I miss werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> soak is nice. <laughs> okay. You. Oh, and now I get to do the damage. Okay. Equal to his torment. Oh, good. Get ready to soak. Mm-hmm. 
you get to roll your stamina plus your armor. Okay. As a stoke roll against difficulty six. Wasn't expecting a food fight. Uh, as this devourer has caused the seed sorry, to... Sorry, that joke too corny? Suddenly grow ex- instantly. <sighs> Shucks, man. I'm just embarrassed for you. <laughs> that joke's been stalking That's my seven birth. successes. Okay. You take one lethal damage. One point of lethal. As the roots dig into you before you break it off of you. Ooh. What is and now? What is lethal? Uh, put an X through it. Oh, under bruised? Yeah, it, you take the first box. It's bruised, but it's lethal. Okay, so it's an X. Okay. Yep. There is lethal, there is uh, superficial, and then there is aggravated. Okay. Yep. So you are now bruised. Okay. That's what it counts as. Mm. And now we're flashing over to uh, August. You see this thing standing in the cornfield now. Uh-oh. Um, can I tell if this this plant is... So it's a plant monster, ostensibly. Mm, it is. Give me a legacy roll. You want to ask? Give me a legacy. Intelligence. Fine. Uh, legacy. Um, you want to ask? I'll give you an answer if you can get uh, intelligence legacy difficulties uh, five on this one. Don't worry. If you succeed, you'll at least be batting a thousand so far. Oh, well, hey, you know, that's three successes, actually. It is a devourer that seems to be specialized in lore of the beast. My question more was the purpose like, does it look like it has a lot of water in it? You're going to have a hard time using control water on him. He is a okay. demon. Gotcha. Then I'm going to do like, I'm going to do, I don't want to say like a test shot, but before I use the staff, I want to see how effective shooting the bow is at it. Okay. That is a uh, Dex athletics roll. Or as Shanky my, likes to I, say, I use my death. athletic specialty. <laughs> what is your athletic specialty? Athlete? Just professional athlete. Mm, would you have ever shot a bow before? Um, the only reason I'd say yes is because I also have dots if um, in firearms. So I feel like I have like weapons training. Okay, then go ahead. As Shanky likes to say, death athletics. Yep, let's go ahead and do it. Oh, I'm waiting for the game now where it's death ass athletics. <laughs> death ass. And because of that weapon, actually, your difficulty is four to hit. Because it's an angelic weapon. It was designed to hit. Question. Six to hit. Six to hit. No, it's four to hit. No, I'm saying he rolled six. six. You rolled rolled six. six. Sorry, six successes. And you have a question before I? Yeah, I just had a quick question. Looking at the area, the garden, does it have like fencing, like like posts? Nope, just the fences outside of it. They don't worry about beasts getting in the garden when they have devourer handy. Okay. He just makes them leave. Your arrow goes out, and it barely clips this thing but it just bounces off his thick hide it just kind of deflects at an angle (laughs) okay now because there's gunshots expect more guards coming thomas drew lariel and trimdesio you reach the door of the dining hall as you hear the screams yeah uh kathleen's gonna rush into the dining hall and then close the door behind her as she does yeah, and then as soon as she gets in, Agareth is basically going to turn the door into a portal to a uh, a hotel uh, conference room in Columbus, Ohio. Why are you sending people to Ohio? That's not right. Look, if you want someone out of the way, where no, else do you send them? This is somewhere you've seen before. Uh, yeah. How much faith did you, you have? One left, right? Yeah. If it, you drop you know. to zero, it's a problem. Oh, I, I, I'll i just roll like I, it's it's just the next person I see isn't going to have a good day. Well, because if you drop to zero faith, you'll lose your apocalyptic form. 
Okay. And to co- to open the portal, it takes one faith. So you're reap going it. to have oh. to reap. <laughs> you're going to have to reap to get the to make the roll. Yeah. So reap a guard. Shit. No, he has to reap one of his thralls. Oh shit. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, never mind. Agarath is going to walk in after. <laughs> what? 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 Well, I, if you I, go inside. I I can't open the portal. Okay. He's gonna reap. I, a, he's I, gonna I, reap inside the dining room, a face okay. off the people in there. That's what he's gonna try to do. Because if you walk in the dining rooms, they'll see you in your apocalyptic form. You can reap a faith. That'll give you the faith you need to open the portal. Why couldn't okay. he have done it to a guard? Because the guards aren't going to be fooled by that. They've dealt with mm-hmm. this too many times. So they're not part of the faith mill. Okay, so have, I'm going to have Agarath go in first then. And then that way, uh, Chuck Lean will come in and like ward Chuck him Lean. off to, uh, to make it Ooh. look like. Does that make sense? Make it very theatrical. Okay, it works for me. I don't care. And Julio, do you Chris just walk through the wall like a ghost? Yeah, and I this whole time though, like I am trying not to be seen. So you are barely seen outline that they wouldn't know to look for unless they've seen you. As you you step in, Agorth, you come in, and the people oh. see you, and you gain a faith as they Yay. see you in your full apocalyptic form, and they they get that feeling of divine. Now you have two temporary faith. Which Yay. is enough for you to open the portal this turn. <laughs> As Kathleen closes the door and you turn to the door to open up a portal to Ohio, I should cost you a face for that, but uh, now you can roll. I'll which spend is the one I just gained. Yep, you spend the one you just gained and roll stamina intuition. This time your difficulty is six because you've seen this door, you've seen the other end. Yeah, I have. So now you should be good to open your portal. Three. Three? You've opened a portal that leads from the door of this dining hall to Columbus, Ohio. You're not doing them favors. Our Uh, storyteller couldn't have been any more monotone if he tried. (laughs) And as he does this, what do you do, Kathleen? Do you start urging people? So I want to give like the speech thing to get them to come to the door, uh, as it were, if that's okay. Yes, you can do uh, uh, first. Let's roll a, a nice one for you. It's going to be uh charisma. Um, well, uh, I, I was going to say, wouldn't it be like manipulation? I want to do like a manipulation empathy. Okay, go so ahead. Can you just really go into my wheelhouse here. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so with my bonus things, I should get a plus one manipulation and I get, Minus two difficulty on my empathy rolls. <laughs> because these so. are part of the faith mill, uh, your difficulty was only six. They're used to obeying. So uh, that'll jump you even lower. So it makes it real easy. Okay. Well, here's eight. Uh, that is seven successes. Yes. They immediately start coming towards you. There's something uh, magnetic about your apocalyptic form, even though you're not in the full glory of it between your voice, your skills as a psychiatrist and everything else. They start crowding around you. Uh, you uh, the the Chuck voice is just going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. We got we got a safe spot. It's it's just outside. It like it's 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 just it's a secret bunker. This is what we got to do. Come on. Come through this door and, and going to like kind of usher start ushering people into the doorway that Agareth has created so okay and as you send them through the door they start stepping through Drulario what are you doing I'm still just here making sure everything's everybody's doing okay <laughs> at the back of the room Drulario you see movement what kind and of you movement? see the chef step out from the back of the room. And right here, everybody, we're going to break. 
You got this. You're we're, fine. We're going to see everybody in 10 minutes as we go to break because we've got to take a break somewhere in here. We can't do one three hour episode straight. So please, everybody, enjoy the break. We will see you in 10 minutes. And we are live. We're back from break. And uh, what you just missed was booty butt, booty butt, booty butt cheeks. Don't want to even go into the context of that. That is what was being. It's something, everybody. It is something. So as we were before break, the raid on the compound went on. They came through the church. Somebody sensed their. Check, you fix our view. Somebody sensed their use of power. <laughs> and because they sensed the use of power, that also means they immediately assumed their own apocalyptic form. Mm hmm. As they're facing off against a devourer, Chef appeared in the back of the, the dining hall as the humans, the innocent mortals, were being pushed through a portal by the, well, encouraged to step through the portal by the enchanting voice of Kathleen. Now, before we go around and find out everybody's what everybody's up to this round, Julario, you're pretty sure you're not seen because, well, you're in the spirit world, not in... You're 95% in the spirit world, not in this world. Now, as we go around to see what everybody's planning to do this turn, let's see everybody's plans. This is the, the first real rule. So we're going to be roll our first real turn, I will say. We need to get some initiatives in here from people. So uh, let me get some initiatives. I, uh, while... It in the time of uh while Julerial is noticing Chef, uh I want to harvest a faith or reap a faith off of the last person through the door before I close that portal. You can get there when you get to that point of your turn. Okay. Uh I need a initiative from everybody. Um for those that don't know, you roll D10, add your decks, and add your wits to it. Eleven. Okay. I also got eleven. Okay. Remember, if your apocalyptic form gives you any kind of bonuses to initiative, because some of them do, make sure you take those. Um, nine for Julerial. Oh, that actually makes me thirteen. Sorry. Six. Because uh, Kathleen sucks at everything Six. that isn't empathy. Okay. You Parsifor. said it was what again? Dex. You Plus wits and then a D10. Yep. Uh, you roll yep. a D10 and then add your decks and wits. What 19. is yours, Carson? What is 19. it? 18? 19. 19. 19. Jesus. Jesus. When you Jesus. roll a 10 and then you have improved initiative and uh -huh. then four wits and three decks. <laughs> I just have improved physicals, so. <sighs> Malefactors are travelers by nature. We mm -hmm. move around. <laughs> okay. I got it. Got mine. I'm just waiting for Agoreth's number. Oh, 15. I was waiting for you. Okay, 15. There we go. So we got everyone's initiative. Now let's go around and find out what everyone plans to do. Actually, we'll do it the easy way. We'll go right down the number, and then you just tell me what you're going to do. That way we're not spending a lot of extra time talking about shit that we don't need to talk about. Okay, so we got that one on him. Okay, now I have everybody. You know who goes first. Carson or you go first. What are you doing? Uh, I, I'm of two minds. On one hand, are there any, like, just from as I'm booking it towards this devourer, is there uh, any equipment that I can see just in the general vicinity? Maybe, like, you know, trailer, golf cart, any? No. Or anything like I mean, that? No. There's a, a bit of away from them. You can see where the garden tools were leaned up against the admin building. Uh, no, I, I need something at least partially, uh, mechanical. Um, all right, then I guess I'm doing the other one. Uh, taking aim with my nine millimeter, which is such a bizarre choice of weapon in this situation, but it's what I got. Uh, and then with dead reckoning, since you said that helps me aim at the very yes, first demon session. And I'm also going to enhance uh, no, sorry, manipulate inertia so that the bullet that I fired goes out really fast. Okay, so let's do your manipulate inertia first. We're going to roll that because okay. that's going to change everything else, right? Right. 
Uh, that is a Dex Athletics roll. We'll, we'll add that. What's my difficulty on that, sir? Uh, it's always six. Two successes. Okay. So two successes. Uh, each extra success becomes an automatic level of damage. So if you hit, you're adding two levels of damage. Now it's going to be your dex firearm skill against his ability to dodge. Sounds good. And his is dex athletics. So we're going to roll, or dex dodge, sorry. All right, that's going to be three successes. You go to shoot, but as you go to line up your shot and fire, he begins to move quicker than you would believe possible, get due to his size as he starts charging Erezeth, causing your shot to miss as the bullet bounds off into nowhere. Whistles Perfect. very fast through the air. And as Erezeth, you see it coming, you barely have time to react as it suddenly reaches you and its gigantic claws come raking down on you. Mm -hmm. You need to do a dodge roll. Dodge a devourer, you can dev dodge a ball. Damn straight. Difficulty is, of course, six. That's nine successes. Nine successes? He comes in close, and these giant claws come down, and you manage to step aside from his blows as he attempts to hit you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Next on the list here, going down the uh, in initiative, Agorath. You are in there with you see Chef in the back. What are you doing? Reaping one faith from the person as he goes, Staring into his eyes and making him see the divine as they go. Oh, oh very specifically, Agareth is reinforcing how inconsequential this puny mortal is when compared to space and the beings around them, and then boots his ass to Columbus. As they look into the what is almost a black hole of divinity. What, yeah, what are you doing now? Uh, I, I mean, I can do that and still do something else. Yeah, that's just you looking at him as he goes through and staring into his soul. Of course uh, you can. Well, I'm booting his ass to Columbus, and then I'm closing the portal. Can I do something else? You can't use another power, but if you have something that's not you using one of your lures, sure. Um, I will let you activate the diadem. Of course, that'll cost you one faith, but you'll be able to activate the diadem. Uh, I don't know that that's... Eh, fuck it. it. Gives us five turns. Uh, so yeah, so I'll gain the faith and then I'll activate it. So that still puts me at one floating. And as you do that, the chef, as he's standing there, suddenly his form begins to shift as he is forced into his apocalyptic form against his will by the diadem of unmuted form. And he grows much taller than what he was. He was a short, well, short, stubby African-American man. Now he gets taller. His skin almost looks like wet mahogany as he stretches out a bit. There's blue flickers of lightning that start to dance around his body in an angry nimbus as he is now standing there, forced into his apocalyptic form, but unable to shift the water at this point for five turns. Now we're going down the list. That was a Goreth. Chef, you see him concentrate. You feel him attempt to warp reality, but he's unable to shift his form. His first instinct was to escape, but he is unable to shift the water form. 
as you have locked him into it. And you can see the shocked look on his face as he doesn't understand how his powers are unable to work at this time. Oh, yeah, no, Agarath from the doorway is just doing this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) God, space is, like, aggressive. Bazazel and Erezeth go at the same time. Bazazel, what are you doing? Cool. Um, Seeing Big Boy have uh, C. Clark miss with the shot and me previously uh, getting an arrow dinged off, uh, I look at the, I get the, the wooden stick, the... What was it called? The staff of the uh, fork bolt. Fork bolt. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, uh, here goes nothing, and I crack it on the ground, and I want to invoke storms for one attack at Big Batty here. And a sky that was clear seconds ago, out of nowhere, a dark storm cloud forms above, and a lightning bolt arcs down from the sky. It's a seven die attack against difficulty is nine. And you can spend one faith to make one automatic success. Do I, so as far as the, do I have to use the same system to like, do I have to spend a faith to just invoke this or is it just, okay. This particular artifact doesn't use faith to, to uh, initiate. That's why it's only usable once a scene. I will certainly then use uh, a faith to get a success. Yep. And now you have seven dice against difficulty nine. As you call in lightning bolts from this storm and, and pray you don't hit, roll. pray you don't botch and, and nuke uh, Erezeth with lightning. She can fix nothing, herself. Nothing I can, Actually, you can't nothing. botch now. You spent one faith. Uh-huh. You can't botch. Nothing I, else I can do to try and get me re-rolls or uh-huh. anything on this. Not it's really. It's lightning. It's, you know how hard it is to control a lightning yeah, bolt? Yeah, that's really hard to control. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Difficulty is nine. Okay. Meanwhile, all I have going through my head is ACDC. Uh, with the faith, five successes. Dear God. Um, what is your permanent torment? Uh, three. Three? So you have done 15 lethal damage from as five lightning <laughs> bolts. You see them converge on this guy's location. Now I've got to roll his soak. Oh, they meant forked like it's the tines at the top of the sky, not the bottom. Okay, I get it now. Am I even going to get to hit these, this guy? <laughs> well, you we'll just, see. We, He's I a devourer. You can see, like, they are you can, tough sons of bitches. You see August like, holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, that just starts cackling. <laughs> hitting a corpse is still hitting. God, I I need to get better about building items for everyone. <laughs> Jesus, if that's what's possible. Mm-hmm. Five, and then he has his armor. Let's see how much he takes. Hmm. Okay, so one, two. I have to roll for each bolt that hit him. No. <laughs> oh, That's a lot of soak rolls. But the bolts strike into him. Most of them seem to have been absorbed by his, by his thick skin that gives him an armor, though he is now smoldering in multiple spots. His armor was not enough to completely absorb the force of these lightning bolts. But he's still standing. He is standing, but he's definitely not feeling as well as he was a minute ago. <laughs> yes. And now we're going down to the next person on the list here. Uh, that was Arizeth. Yeah. Your attack. <clears throat> I am activating both hammers. So that's two faith you yep. spend as both hammers erupt in flame. Mm-hmm. Not the flames of mortality but the flames of the divine mm-hmm. they don't burn her at all even though it's engulfing her entire hand in it they don't engulf her at all they don't damage her it feels almost like cool air and with my extra limbs i can attack him with both yes you can you can get two attacks because you get an extra <laughs> an extra attack without the penalty and that is strength melee 
Uh, that will be Dex Mealy. Dex Mealy. Mm -hmm. Strength is determining damage, <laughs> not that. Okay. Difficulty is four, yes? Yes. Okay. One, two, three, four, five successes on the first one. Okay, so let me and make a note. And my strength is four. Let me make a note. Yep, so your strength is four, and you had five successes? Mm -hmm. Yep, sure did. One, two, three, four, five successes on the second one. Okay. Strength is four. So strength is four. This thing does... Uh, the initial damage is going to be your strength plus four, okay? So that's eight. Eight plus one more uh, because you had one success over him for the first hit. So it's nine, well, nine dice against difficulty six. Okay. You're going to get to roll that twice because both your attacks hit, but only by a margin of one. Then those cannot uh, explode. First one's seven. Okay. God, if damage could explode with tens, that would be insane. Second one, seven. Okay. <clears throat> Let me see how many he's got on his soak. Because he gets to soak these. Because he's got his armor. The first blow hits him. Both of them hit. You connect with both. The first blow almost bounces off him. We deal with the fire attack separately from this. Mm -hmm. The second blow is a little bit better. It hits him a little bit harder in his shoulder, though you can tell that his hide has absorbed most of the blow from the weapons. Now you've got to roll two eight dice fire attacks. Difficulty is six on those. This is where the punishment comes in. The divine fire. The hammers are nothing compared to that. Six. Okay, and then your other one? Seven. Seven, okay. Rolling his soaks on those. Nice thing about armor is he can soak aggravated with that. He's got a fever, and the only cure is more hammers. That's right. Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. As both your blows, the fire seems to have caught on him, causing him to burn even more. That one seems to have staggered him a bit. He is not in very good shape right now. He is pretty fucked from the, the, the fire burning on him. Mm -hmm. As we can, but he is still not down. Okay. Who would have thought being struck by lightning and set on I fire is bad? a demon. Uh, that comes to that once you destroy his mortal host. <sighs> we will discuss that. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna slurp a demon. Yep. Okay, so now we're going down the initiative chart. Drillerial, what are you doing? The chef apparently has not noticed you. Yes. So, uh, do 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 do. Uh, first of all, uh, how big is this uh, dining hall? Uh, maybe twenty wide by forty long. Okay. So I have. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, permanent faith, um, for, uh, aura of entropy. So I'm pretty sure that covers four yards. <laughs> um, it does. So he, uh, will lose one die from the dice pool unless a successful stamina roll has been made. Um, but I'm going to... Um, fly quickly to him. Now, you'll have to manifest a bit more in the physical world to affect him with the entropy. That's why your friends aren't affected by it. But okay. you can walk right to him because, well, nothing in the dining hall stops you. You are a spirit for all, in, all major purposes. You can walk right up to him and then manifest more to put him in the entropy field. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I, so I will actually, so, cause I sell my wings, I'm going to fly quickly to him. Okay. Um, and then I will come back into mortal realm. <clears throat> and as you all see Drew Lariel, suddenly start taking shape again and she becomes more solid, more in the world, though she's still partially in both. 
Now she's straddling both worlds at the same time. Uh, you see a slump to the chef's shoulders a bit as this field of icy chill envelops him as his vitality is being sapped by an aura of entropy. Um, am I allowed to cast a power? You can. It's okay. just a thought to use your cloak. Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to actually materialize behind him. Okay. Um, and I, cause he's really big. I kind of land on his shoulders. He was big <laughs> because he had grown, he'd stretched up and when he yeah. assumed his apocalyptic form, not by yeah. choice. So I actually land on him. And I kind of just like put either hand on side of his head and okay. I'm going to cast decay. Okay. Go ahead. Let's be an abject lesson to you, chat. Do not fuck with the Grim Reaper. It's stamina medicine. Which is horrifying <laughs> because he doesn't know you're there so I'm not giving him a defense roll as you hit him with decay sorry remind me time explodes uh no it's combat okay or, okay so it's a power it's a power yep. uh so uh three three as you touch him, you can see the decay set into him. That gives him three uh, aggravated wounds immediately. You, he has no way to soak that. Are they in the shape of rotting handprints on his face? It is. Would definitely be uh, necrosis of his skin. As the skin under it is died. As she has decayed and, and fucked his body up. Does apocalyptic forms rot the same way that a regular human body would? Uh, they are not immune to it in apocalyptic form. Mm -mm. So uh, it is damaging this apocalyptic version of him. Now, you know, he wasn't in a high torment. So uh, the mahogany now looks uh, dry rotted. Ashen. Ashen. Mm -hmm. Some places almost like it had been eaten away by, by worms or something because of the, the way the decay affects his, his mahogany tone that he had. And now we have to flash back outside. The devourer goes again. Couldn't I have used a power also? You could have. Okay. He goes again. He has extra attacks mm -hmm. or extra, extra actions because it costs him faith to do it. Uh, you have no defense this turn because you use your defense against his first one and you weren't full defense. So he's attacking you this time. Okay. I'm roll my attack. Big boy. <laughs> Don't flirt with the enemy. <laughs> you will get the soak. Uh-huh. Flirt with people who deserve it, not, a th not the people we're killing. Okay, that's how much damage he just Okay, did. cute little earth monster. Thank you. <laughs> His claws this time reach out and cut you. Okay. Okay, you get only get your armor value to soak. So you're going to roll five dice. Difficulty is six. That's four. Four? Okay. You take three aggravated wounds oh. as his claws tear into you. Oh. Now you have to leave that first bruised you have. So you'll take three and then be bruised, have bruised or, or uh, a uh, damage on your wounded as well from the lethal. Yep. Because it doesn't, it moves the, uh, your lethal one down, basically. Okay. So bruised, hurt, and injured all have aggravated, aggravated, which is star, and then you're wounded, which means you have two less dice in your pool. Okay. If you need to heal yourself, go for it. She'll have to... I'll have to not attack around. You can try using your other power. Yeah, I... You could use I, your I heal you next could turn. Use the, yeah, use the lore. Yeah, lore of awakening heal. Yeah. Yep. You'll be able oh, to do that, that next does, turn. Does the awakening also uh, take that long? No. 
No. Oh, okay. No. That's only when you're basically concentrating to heal using faith. Yeah. Yep. The the out of combat. Right. Healing. Yeah. So the initiative values stay the same. As we start up a new round in Carsador, what are you doing? Uh, technically, well, I didn't do anything. Yeah, oh, that's right. Sorry. That's right. You were so at six. Move on. You were real on. slow. No, no, I, I can't do anything, so move on. <laughs> you were pushing the rest. Actually, this turn, you were pushing the last of them through the doorway as Thomas was getting the, the faith reap. That's why I didn't go to you. I remember now. As you've sealed them up and then closed the door behind them. So it actually starts up with Carsador again. Okay. Um... He is pretty fucking injured right now, too. All right. This half is to... he mauled? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe close. Uh, th this half depends yes, actually, on. He's at the mold level. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be able to like run up on him, right? Sure. Okay. Um... Get in here, partner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of have to now. Um, would it take my whole turn to get one of Arizeth's hammers? If she'd let me take it. No, I'd give you a uh, one die penalty. She'll okay. pass one off to you. Yeah, and then I will manipulate inertia to just make sure that it moves down really fast onto him. Okay, that'll come after you do your uh, dex uh, melee roll. Okay. Difficulties four, though, because magic hammers. Magic hammers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were designed for people who may or may not be able to fight. Uh, four successes. Four successes? Okay, so that means you're going to roll. He's not even defending against you. Oh, no, he's so hyper-focused on Arizeth. <laughs> so that means uh, you are going to do, what's your strength? Uh, my strength? Three. Three? Arizeth is good for getting aggro. Roll 11 <laughs> dice against difficulty six. Okay, let me collect them up real quick. That's a lot of dice. Oh, that's all the dice I've already had collected out. That's hilarious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, because you took the hammer, it's no longer in flame because that was that's, her flame, not yours. That's fine. <laughs> I don't need it activated for this. It's good enough as a hammer. Still diff six, correct? Yep. It's diff six for the damage roll, yes. That'd be six successes on 11 dice. Hmm. The hammer comes in. He wasn't expecting. He didn't even try to defend against it. As the hammer crashes into the side of this thing's skull. <gasps> and with a bone sickening crunch, the hammer embeds itself deep in the skull of this beast-like creature. And it collapses to the ground. Oh, I'm going to slurp it. We'll come to that in a minute. <laughs> You have to wait for him to leave the body, and then you can. I need uh, dex plus uh, athletics, or dodge, sorry, dex plus dodge for Virginia, Clark, and August. Is this an bullets. attack? Bullets. Yeah, bullets. Okay. Uh, if someone's shooting at me, their uh, difficulty is increased because of the, like, shifting air and shit around me. Okay. That's fine. It's part of, it's part of the five, apocalyptic okay. shit. Go ahead and give me a dex uh, plus dodge. Because though she had five pews out there and there were five guard patrols, there's four guards in the guard shack that aren't tied up by pews attacking them. You said there am, were ten guards. On patrol. Am I able to potentially manipulate inertia on these bullets? Uh, there is a rule against the bullets. It actually mentions them is directly. Is it bullets? Uh, let me see what it says about bullets. Uh, snatching something out of the air because it have to you'd have to wait till it touches you. Um, bullets aren't okay. Sorry, what was the roll then? Dex uh, plus dodge or Let's 
Four as well. Four as well. As the bullets strike out, you see they go out all over the place, but it's obviously panic fire because with your divine agility, you manage to avoid getting hit. Though uh, one or two bullets do seem to bounce off of uh, Erzeth's armor. It was real close to them hitting it, real close, but not close enough to be good. God, even the universe is roasting these guys. They're mortals facing divine Divine. torment. Yeah. So as we're going down, the devourer is out of the fight now, which means we go to Agorath next. As Chef is decayed a bit. I am going to use... So can I do like a lore and attack? Yes. So I'm going to do... Lore is a matter of thought. Okay. So I'm going to do the uh, lore um, for 4C. Um, So Wits, Intuition, and then... uh, yeah, so wits intuition. So one, two, three, four. Uh, that allow you to interject at any time if you want to interrupt one of my character's actions. Yeah, basically it takes me out of initiative and at any point you go, no, I just I'm not letting it. you do that. Yes. Yeah. It's literally what it does. Uh, uh, five. Five? five. So five turns. You can interrupt any action that Chef does to do whatever you want. Um, and then I am going to um, the only attack that I've got, which is I'm going to try and shoot him with the bow. Okay, go ahead. Dex Athletics. Um, so here's my question about that. Um, since this is a mundane thing, can I spend willpower? Yes, it's a it's bow. An it's an attack. You can spend one for one automatic success. So I'm going to spend one willpower, um, and then one, two. And your difficulty is four because divine weapon again. So I got four successes. Four successes uh, to hit. To, to hit. hit. It's a tie, but that means it's in your favor. So you're going to do strength plus four lethal damage. So that'll be six lethal. Six dice against difficulty six. So many dice rolls in the V20 system. And then he'll get to try to soak it. Try. Uh, That's six. Six? Yep. You see what his apocalyptic form had? Yeah, that didn't help him. (laughs) As you... Fire the arrow. You see it embed deep into his apocalyptic chest. Eh, eh, eh. And it staggers him back. And he drops to a knee. He's not unconscious, but he's not holding up very well at this moment. Not at all. As we continue down the initiative track. To see the rest of this go down. Let me pull my initiative chart back up. So next down the list. It's certainly not him. His is dropped way down due to wounds. Which means Erzeth and Bazazale. You're next. I went first last time. You can go first this time. Hey, Erzeth, what are you doing? I'm going to pull a Melina for Mortal Kombat. I'm going to finish him. Oh, he's down. We'll deal with you dealing with this escaping or stealing his soul after the fight as long as you don't wander far from him. Or okay, then she just turns with a look of just flat affect at these humans shooting at her. And with a thought, can she do more than one person with their health? 
With which power? Basically, she's going to give them all fatal heart attacks. I think you have to touch them. I don't have to touch them. For, uh... No, I've been doing that because she does like to touch people, but she doesn't have to. It doesn't specify in the in the. I'm looking power. here to see which power you're using. Cleanse, but the high torment version. Mm -hmm. I'm looking here. It has to be a single subject. Okay. Must be able to touch their target to perform the evocation. Oh. Unless you're going to just straight up spread sickness and corruption. Yeah. All right, I will be sure to get some Vix when this is all done. So, so gain one it. temporary torment, mm -hmm. and then you roll uh, your uh, stamina medicine. Still can only get one at a time, but you're going to teach that one not to shoot at you. And I don't know, seeing someone suddenly just get sick for no reason would probably, I'm sure, unnerve a couple others. Yeah. That is seven. And he can't soak that seven. The guy starts coughing and shaking. Coughing more, blood starts coming out of his mouth, and then he just collapsed to the ground. Because seven is to put him straight to incapacitated. He literally uh, just had massive internal bleeding and died. Mm -hmm. That kind of scares off some of them. What I give, I can take away. Bazazel, your go. All you've got is the three guards. The rest of the guards are unconscious from being beaten with uh, church pews. Bullets ain't doing shit to a church pew. Um. It's only the guards in the guard shack. There's three left. Let's see. Um, sorry, bear with me. Um, You can always go with the bow shot. Yeah, the thing is, like, Bazazale doesn't have disdain for these humans. They just don't know better. Eh. Um, they've, they've, or they've been manipulated by other people, by other forces. Well, then, uh, might I give you a suggestion? Sure. Uh, breakout empathetic response. Or try a uh, manipulation plus, uh, I don't know, maybe a manipulation expression to convince them to put their weapons down. You are the divine, after all. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'm not going to use a power yet. Okay, but manipulation I'll say, expression. Uh, yeah, I'll say, this can end. Just put your weapons down. And because of, uh, remember, you get a plus two or plus one to your manipulation. Uh, actually, if you want to use leadership, I'll, I'll even count your lyrical voice in that one. So difficulty is five and you get plus one manipulation. So add an extra die. As you try to use your angelic form to convince them. Despite Sorry, what's the not worth women. Uh, what's difficulty? The difficulty is uh four. Oh shit. I mean, you are the divine. They've been trained to listen to the divine. Uh, seven successes. A lot of a lot of fours. That should be enough to convince them to put their guns down. Daz, now we got to flash to the rest of them inside real quick. Next down the list. Is Julerial. What are you doing? What uh, condition is our chef in? He is in crippled state. He is one away from being incapacitated or dead. 
I'm going to hit with another decay then, but this time I gr- I reach down lower and I grab his arms. Okay. Like his shoulders, like right here. Because like, imagine like, I'm kind of like piggybacking him, <laughs> like sitting on his so shoulders. So go ahead and roll your stamina medicine. I, I know this wouldn't be your reaction, but for a second when Shanky said uh, he's one away, it's like, cool, donkey punch. <laughs> Straight in the back of the head. <laughs> And we'll see how many you get. Uh, what's my success here again? Difficulty is six because he's not able to move. He can't dodge out of the way. Y'all so have already got him really messed four. up. Four? Uh, that's going to be four levels of aggravated damage. That is going to turn him to dust. And now, as he turns to dust, you see the hovering form of his apocalyptic form shimmering above it. And as for the ones out in the garden, you see a translucent but hovering form of this beast you fought above the body. Oh, I'm as, going to absorb that. As both of them celestial essences there and, it, and about to try to flee the scene. Okay, so right off, Arizeth is going to go straight to eating him. Mm-hmm. He's so, been a bad doggy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> as you step into the form and you breathe in to pull the energies of its apocalyptic form and who, what it is. You need to make a faith roll. Okay. You roll a number of dice equals to your faith. I'll roll against you again, equal to his torment. You don't know his true name, so. That is five. Okay. I get to roll his. Okay. As you pull him in, You steal a number of faith points equal to your successes. You beat him by one die, but it doesn't matter what his margin is. You get to beat him. You get five faith points off him. Permanent? No, they're used to do uh, buy things. Uh, One faith point is equal to five freebie points. That you can use to avoid, uh, improve traits, which is ability attributes or willpower. Uh, you can also convert it into stealing his memory, or uh, you can spend two of them to increase your faith rating by one. Couldn't she also get a lore off yes, of Yes, that, that she can use that by the, off the freebie points. One freebie point for a point of lore? No, it's you get five. You'll have 25 freebie points, and it's equal to the character creation. We'll deal with that off screen. Okay, we'll deal with that off screen. Because that's going to take a bit to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Can, uh, can, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead now. Y'all have to decide what you're doing with the other. I was going to ask, I wanted to do this last time when I said I wasn't doing anything. Uh, I wanted to do a legacy role to see if I knew who this guy, Chef, was, since we've seen his apocalyptic form. So. And if you guys are thinking about eating him, I would suggest you do the same. Yeah. Damn, uh, that's not great. Two successes, so. Don't have enough with two successes yeah. to get, well, you wouldn't get his true name, but even to get a celestial name would only do. Also, Arizeth isn't named Arizeth anymore. I know her no. name is slightly, di- well, her no, celestial her celestial name, name does not change. Her, her true, true name, name is shifted. has changed. Yes. So if anyone uh, knows her true name, like our Duke, he can't um, summon her anymore. Yeah, a <laughs> syllable or two has altered now. <laughs> I mean, there's part of it, but not all of it. Not all of it. <laughs> what was the legacy roll again? It's intelligence and legacy. Sweet. And while they're doing their uh, their snack time, can I look around <laughs> to see if there's anyone else that that's would be of a threat to us? Uh, a number of other guards start coming out of the dorm. But seeing as the first group of guards aren't shooting, they're kind of looking in confusion. They were asleep. It was their off ship. They were sleeping. They had to wake up, get their shit together, grab their guns. They don't seem to want to shoot, though, if the others aren't shooting. Uh, so no other no other fallen. No what? other fallen right now, no. I would relay that. I'm keeping an eye out, but I'm not seeing any other. Perched on the bell tower. 
and the other fall are fallen. He's still in the church. Yeah. What was the diff again? Six. Five. Five. Hmm. Because my int is six right now. There and is then something. I have two legacy. You don't know their true name, but you know their celestial name. They were Namriel, the Defiler. Wow, no titles. Must have been real important. They weren't. <laughs> uh, yeah, I figure, fuck it. I'll try. If no one else wants him. You're going to try to eat him down, huh? Sure. Okay. Now comes the, the, the bad shit. You roll <laughs> a number of dice equal to your faith against the chef's torment rating. So... Is it permanent faith or what I have left? Permanent faith. Oh, thank God. And your difficulty is six on that. Oh, great. Or. You know, I had more torment than you had faith, but I only got two successes. I shit you not. I rolled six, 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 nine. So make a note that you have four. Nice. Of the uh, freebie points that we could okay. spend. That'd be 20, right? Yep. Yeah, it's faith points that equal five freebie points each. Yep. Shit, why do we go through sessions to earn XP? Just to eat our friends. What the fuck? Fuck yeah! <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at all this like I might need to get out of here. <laughs> no, just the enemies. Just the enemies. So, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Wouldn't eat like, you guys. You're too useful. I just imagine as soon as, like, Agareth does this, he just kind of, like, like, he's walking up to him and he goes, You do cook nice. Uh, and then, yeah. So what this means is as you have consumed them, you feel uh, the torment in you and you have to push it back down. You have to suppress because his torment was higher than the other ones and you have to suppress it back down, but you manage to get it under control as you feel a bit of the defiler in you. Everyone likes little party time. It's okay. And as you all, the guards put down their weapons, turn it over to you all to discuss how you're going to deal with this before we end tonight's episode. And uh, so you're aware, Erzeth, you're pretty injured. I'm going to heal myself with heal. Okay. Uh, while she's doing that, I'd like to check something real quick. Go ahead. Uh, stamina plus medicine. And For the healing. Yes, what are you checking, Clark? I, I know it won't give me like precise location necessarily, but I'm going to lay path to the malefactor. Go ahead I don't remember try. his name. I know he got his name, but I don't remember it. Um, his name was actually... Was that Pomor at all? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm laying a path to him. I can he's heal Ag, the... right? Yes. Okay. So I got one Ag I, per success. I got five, so I can clear all my damage. You get one heal, one per success. As she invokes, you all feel the lore of creation changed as she begins to knit up all of it. Um, once we kind of get clear of the compound, I want to potentially try and destroy it via summon water i'm going to uh tell the guards to report to the uh inst the the place where the shelter mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah and make sure there was no other people left and she's going to uh how many dogs are here uh there was the only one of them was out on patrol for some reason the rest of them were still in the cage and yeah. there was another six in the in the kennels. As she approaches them, because she has now this essence of this other guy in her, do they act differently with her? Uh, no. They still snarl a bit, but they, uh, they're trained, so they won't attack unless given a command. She's going to free them. Okay. 
they're trained guard dogs. They don't attack just because. Mm -hmm. She's going to free all of them. How many did you get, Clark? Uh, four. No path can be found. Okay. That at least tells me something. They weren't here. Um, the guards, they don't, like, argue or fight or disagree They have with... been Where is that? conditioned to obey Fallen. Mm -hmm. And she just sent them to basically report to the ones that will actually take care of them. I give you all the scene. Um, Drillerial immediately drops, like, after... The cloak Shepherd's. expires. A few yeah. turns later, I've oh, yeah. I've dropped uh, apocalyptic form. Yeah, Agareth does too. <laughs> Same or low torment or whatever. I before I I do like I said, if we are clear of the compound, I want to try and if I can sense like a water source under like underground, whether via a well or there's some a sort. well. But um, Agora or Agoreth doesn't have the faith available right at this moment to open a portal to get you all out of there. So uh, you're going to have to call a thrall to drive you out of there. Oh, uh, I, yeah, he'll send uh, like a, a message to Robert who is in Dwight nearby. Mm -hmm. And it's just like five, less than five us. miles down the road. Yeah. It's like, come get us. So you have time to talk before you leave the compound as the car is coming. We can't give him faith. Can we? No. Oh. Nah, I'll be fine. Oh, no, because that's that's like a lore power, isn't it? Yeah. To transfer faith. Yes, there is. There is a lore power for that. Wouldn't it be possible to create, like, water geysers under these buildings to just essentially wipe out this compound? No, but you could summon up a uh, flood. Anyway. When it comes time. That's was, one of the I powers. I going to say, or, like, a fucking wicked strong, like, windstorm just fucking tornado this that. place i can't i can't do that yet unless i, I don't rough. have that power yet oh i don't have cyclone yet i only have two in storms so i can either summon water or turn into water i will after the session though because i have enough points to get that shit yeah, your choices are you can spend uh you need four successes to cause a flood or you've got flaming hand numbers you just burn the fucking place to the ground so before like trying to destroy the place because Agareth is, if nothing else, a cryptic, like he wants to look and see if there's like any sort of information that he can grab from this place, like doctrine material, anything. It doesn't seem to be doctrine material as you're wandering the place waiting for Thrall to show up to pick you up. Most of what you find in the admin building is listing shipments coming in of food because the, the garden wasn't growing enough to support everybody yet. Mm -hmm. Electric bills, construction costs, arrangements for construction to come and, and, and work on the towers. They didn't keep any other records. So Agareth will take all of the paperwork that he can reasonably find. Okay. Um, just because I feel like if there's enough of a paper trail then maybe he can like maybe there's other information that they can use to try and figure out i don't know it's something. useful stuff you've got patterns since since patterns you may be able to yeah. find something from it later okay uh i'm gonna try and raid the church see what? if there's anything in there aside no, they, from just the basic it was all stuff. a verbal sermon apparently because there's no books they don't how do you preach that which is not a modern religion. They re your guess is they relied on apocalyptic forms and sermons. Lazy. Gotcha. Effective. Especially with chef there being able to do empathetic response. Please All the believe devilers. what we are about defilers to say. Defilers are great yep. cult leaders. Yes, they are. <laughs> All right, then, yeah, I'll start with the church and just uh, spend a faith to tap the hammer against as much wood as I can on the way out. Okay. And start with the church and just go. I'll, I'll be the one to do uh, building destruction duty. As you set fire to all the buildings? I mean, this is a divine hammer, divine fire. It burns. 
Even the stone burns. It's divine flame. Come on now. And as you all pile up, I'll let him, I'll let you do your role, August, before you all have a talk in the car as you're leaving you over your demonic cell phones. Actually, it's not a car, it's a van. It's the only way to fit you all. Uh, you're going to oh. go stamina survival, August. This okay. entire time, literally, all Agareth is doing while he's waiting for Robert to show up is singing Kumbaya as the place burns down. Um, is it a willpower or faith to get a, a faith success? for an automatic success. One faith. Sorry, you, you cut out on my end. You need one faith. You spend one faith to get one automatic success, and it's oh. stamina survival difficulty six. You'll I'll need do that. three more for a raging flood. Yeah, I'll do. I'll spend a faith. Okay. So three, three more. Uh, yeah, you need three more. No, it's just a penalty flood. I got two successes. Okay, so that gave you three total. That's no, a three torrent total. of total. Or torrent of water. A lot of water comes and floods and washes things, but it's not a full flood. It it just soaks everything to the core. Uh, I just I I you know I want to specifically like have it go through the garden okay. first. Floods the garden out. Okay. It and burst then, through their irrigation pipes that were under the garden, and water starts boiling up from the ground. And it just keeps coming and coming and coming. It doesn't seem to put the buildings out except where it directly touches them. All the rest keeps burning. And the van arrives and you all pile in it. And I turn it over to you as you discuss leaving the events of this night before we end this episode. Agareth chilling in the Now I will say seat. Kathleen uh, Mars Kathleen and Mars saw Thomas absorb Chef and Clark and August saw Virginia absorb now that the I Devourer. Have, now that I have absorbed him, can I roll Legacy to figure out who he was? Nope. Okay. Not unless you're going to spend one of your faith to get memories out of him. One of the faith that were granted to you no, during the absorption not process. Not that important. Did I roll legacy to see if I remember who he was? Nope. I did see him. He didn't do oh. enough things that would give it away. He was pretty generic devourer form, unfortunately. Okay. Big monster. <laughs> you saw hundreds and hundreds and thousands of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were kind of the shock troops, weren't they? <laughs> yeah. Yes, they were. Uh, Kathleen's going to... I rolled... Uh, five successes and to spend my faith, but Kathleen's going to turn herself back into Kathleen. So, okay. uh, and I have to use another willpower to make that permanent. So, yeah. As you see, Kathleen morph back into Kathleen instead of Chuck, Chuck Lean. That went surprisingly well. Felt too easy. I don't know. I think kind of lucked out. Like those items we got helped a lot. That's true. I just, I'm suspicious of everything. Don't mind me. I mean, it also felt easy because I think we were, we know what else is out there. You know, they're not the only threat. It's a still much bigger than this. We also caught them off guard. Thomas. Would you do a favor for me? Uh, depends. Is it possible for you to check congruence? Anything specifically? What will result from our actions this evening? Sure. Uh, I'll go ahead and do it. Okay. <sighs> Michelle, your fight might have been too easy, but that devourer knocked the shit out of me. Arizeth was definitely... It was an even fight. The only 
advantage was that we were ganging up on him. I had no idea. I hope you're okay now. I'm okay. I, assume. I can okay. heal myself. How many successes, Thomas? Uh, I'm trying to find what the role is. It is perception intuition. All right. Two. Two? In the next day or two, there's a malefactor who's leaving town. You can only see a number of days equal to your faith, so you can see five days in the future. Mm -hmm. And the fallout of this is the malefactor that you all confronted before leaves. Heads out west towards L.A. Do you want the good news or the bad news? All of it. Uh, your buddy is skipping town. Sounds about right. <laughs> He's going out west to the City of Angels. Do you have a time frame as to when he might leave? In the next couple of days. Mm, not enough time to set up an ambush. Do you all have anything to discuss in this car ride? Um, August is just concerned about his wife, so he's keeping silent. Uh, I imagine, like, as Thomas is, is, like, relaxing in the in the passenger seat as Robert drives, he's just like, Julirial is scary. Death often is, especially now that we can experience it. That's all I'm saying. What did you all have to deal with? Uh, so at that point, Julirial turns to August and she's like, we got Chef good for you. Like we said, it's bigger than him. Yeah, but, you know, he threatened your wife, so... Uh, Trim Desiel is going to actually um, mutter uh, Bazazel under her breath so she can just do a direct line of connection to him. Uh, if you need help or you want to do something a little bit more extreme to protect your wife, let me know. I'll have a better idea once we get back. That's fine. I just wanted to make my services available if you felt like that was necessary you know there hey, please don't don't get me wrong they're very it's very appreciated thank you you're welcome the fifth have to stick together some so uh, and then trim does he all break it i'm gonna look over at erazeth we should start a business six uh exterminating devourers we're starting to get good at it <laughs> there's there's not a bit of joke to his voice either he's totally serious about no, that and that's why she finds it hilarious i'll add it to my list of things to do <laughs> if you all would give me one moment mm -hmm. Arimal. The response is faint, hard to fully grasp. Yes. I understand this is not normally what we <clears throat> as cryptics do, but I was wondering if I could run something up the chain that you could disseminate. I owe you for giving me access to my sanctum. What? I'm going to spell out Pomora Doll's name and put a bounty out on him. 
whoever kills him or brings him to me will get a favor determined by them from me. Just me. So uh, whatever limitations I have are the limits. But We do not normally do this, but favor owed. I will put the word out. Thank you. And I'll break it off. Before you can break it off, he says, I will also check with the librarians to see if we have his true name listed. Much obliged. That's something only a cryptic knows about Mm -hmm. the libraries, where they have cataloged every true name that they can remember from the war. I have to wonder if Chef was actually the one who approached you, August, as the woman. Certainly possible. Is there any sort of insight I can do to see if that's possible, if that could have been the case? Sure. Anything I picked up on? Anything I picked up on? Let's have you roll. Um, trying to think. Perception. Um, trying to think what would go with that. Mm, awareness, maybe. Sure. Perception, awareness. Fuck it. It's good enough. Um. I'm going to use a willpower. Okay. There's one success. Uh, With that sick, with the uh, willpower, it's six successes. Based on the mannerisms of what you saw, the fact they were a defiler, and you've seen no other defilers part of this operation, you think the odds are pretty damn good. Given the way he was good at making everybody like him, he was definitely their their face of the group. Yeah, the more I think about it, I think you're right. Though I probably really pissed him off. Uh, not quite warming up to him like I'm sure he thought I would. Oh, yeah, I pissed him off too because I told him to knock off that nonsense. You're not You're not a defiler, though. No. I'm also least expected in our faction. But. (sighs) So that makes three involved. The malefactor, devourer, and a defiler. This sounds like the beginning of a bad joke. I know. Do you think we all should start making our way to L.A.? Or as many of us who can? Maybe. Let's talk about this another night. And I think there are going to be ripples from this that we still need to see. What plays out? How far they reach. Yeah, if they're doing this here, where else are they doing it? Are they doing it in L.A.? Were these just the initiates that they sent out here to try to get it done? Well, and I imagine this isn't the only game in the city as they say so oh no of course not but and i know you're cryptics so this isn't your faction's business but it is my faction's business and i am very concerned when there are members of our faction that are one step away from being raveners themselves subjugating humans
Those fucking guards were so goddamn brainwashed. They did seem to listen rather easily. Yeah. Hell, even the dogs were trained to only act on command. I mean, the people they were uh, using weren't any better. Yeah. I, I truthful, Truthfully, uh, Thomas could have walked in there and done it all himself because as soon as he walked in the door, they were just like, oh, <gasps> uh, so, yeah. Yeah, they were conditioned. What? Are we simply leaving them in Ohio or are we doing something more with them? <sighs> I'm certain some of them would have families, homes. A lot of them were homeless. They need to be brought to the shelter. They need to be deconditioned. Kathleen, I'll need your help. That's like not something I'm going to be able to do right now. It it doesn't have to be immediate. We can give them a few days to wander Ohio. That's okay. They won't get far. I mean, the good thing about Ohio is they'll be happy to leave. No, we did just take them from a place where they were getting shelter and food, and now they're just in Ohio. They'll probably get picked up uh, by the police or something. So, I mean, it's a short term, but at least they're not, I don't think they're going to be doing as much wandering as you would expect, especially if a random group of individuals suddenly appears in a uh, God, can you, you imagine hotel, the hotel staff? conference room. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes, there's going to be a lot of confusion, and I'm certain at least some minor revelation from some people. I imagine they'll probably get taken for psych evaluations to a hospital spouting off about angelic forces and just being in Chicago. And yeah, maybe see if. Um, one of the people from the shelter can send somebody out that way to pick them up. It should be easy enough to find out. Absolutely, who Ooh, they that's, need to pick up. That's actually not a bad idea. We can talk to them. Maybe tell them to send someone who can open doors, like Thomas, to make transportation far more expedient. Yeah. I can shorten travel time. I cannot do it instantaneously. And as you all are heading back to the city, right here, I think, in the aftermath of this compound where two fallen were not just killed, but their souls completely destroyed forever though a portion of them will always live on inside Erezeth and Agoreth. The A-names, apparently, eat people. Watch out for the A-names, everybody. This is where we're going to end. Season 2, Episode 9 of Demon the Road to Hell, which means next week you get to see the aftermath of the events that just occurred. And as always, we got to do the player vote for the XP. Let's see who goes first. Up, oh, Drillario, you got the short end. You're first. <laughs> Eesh. Uh, definitely, everyone. Um, special shout out to um, Thomas and uh, Virginia. Thomas, because I'm sorry, but your form, beautiful. Just beautiful. Cosmic horror walked into a fucking dining hall. <laughs> There's the beauty of uh, the player vote can literally be any reason. You like the apocalyptic form? There you go. 
So that is Drew vote. Kathleen, your turn. Trim Desio's vote. Uh, everybody, I will say you guys should not vote for me because I literally did nothing. No, so. you're de- you I disagree with that. To get in hey. it. You may think. I, you think you do nothing. You may you're think so helpful with people. That there Thomas. Is, no, no, no. Yeah. They would have listened to been Thomas. Like, Thomas could have been like, go through the door. And they would have been like, oh, no, yes, they wouldn't our, he was in high like apocalyptic or, or high torment apocalyptic form. They would not have listened to him. No, they would yeah. have been terrified. They were they were they trained were to respect angels, terror. not demons. Well, <laughs> your, your presence definitely helped. Awestruck people can be pushed through a door. <laughs> so, yeah, everybody else. Though, Stop did down it great, on yourself. So, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I got news for you. They would not have listened to an apocalyptic form demon. The only reason they weren't in full revelation mode was because they've seen so much divine. It's made them numb to it. Desensitized to it. Yes. So now we go to August. Bazazel, your turn. Uh, I would say everyone, but I'm going to say everyone who didn't have snack time because the the other two are getting, yeah, like, (laughs) father's points already. (laughs) Forget that. I'm not giving you another extra point. Forget that. Well, we do say for any reason. You had your snack. (laughs) We do say for any reason. Fair. (laughs) Yep. Hey, I offered it to the others. I'm just saying. Thomas, your turn. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely um, voting for everyone. And, uh, you know, self-negging aside, I like literally, I think that as much as you know morgan wants to say you know oh you know trim desil didn't do anything i i 100 percent agree save those people's lives yeah like a hundred percent like i <laughs> i think i think well I, it saved them enough um i i definitely think agareth being less like he he's not the kind of being that really cares really about people it's just live there a means to an end sort of a thing like he he he's not like oh let's subjugate but and i i think that she's a very good temperance for him where it she keeps him sort of away from the the more dangerous side of what he could do because it's like Let, let's try something else like so i definitely think that yeah so I, i'm saying everybody um, with a special shout out for Trimdesio. Oh, and Julirial, because that was badass. That was. There's a lot of badass tonight. There's a lot of badassery. Clark, Carsador's <laughs> vote. Uh, I will be giving it to everyone. Special shout outs to Virginia and Michelle. Michelle, because God damn, Slayer is such a cool house. Just overall, like seriously, you have no idea how close I was to playing one. <laughs> when I first came up with all this. And then, Virginia, girl, I said it in character. I'll say it out. We need to start taking out all the devourers. Goddamn. <laughs> sure, they're the house of combat, but we're the house of fuck you up, I guess. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> yeah, we can, here, we can start the eighth house. There we go. <laughs> we are house. Fuck you up. <laughs> Yeah, there's a whole camp that will establish sometime down the line. Yes! Wish a motherfucker would. There we go. Okay, so now we go to Virginia. Your vote. What is Arizes' vote? I gotta say everybody, but I'm gonna go through and mention the standouts for everyone. Drillerial. Legit. Fucking up, chef. Oh, my God. It was so good. It was so brutal, but it was so good. Surprise, you're rotting. <laughs> Surprise, you're just falling apart. <laughs> yeah. <She> was best. <laughs> that was so badass. Tremdesial. Legit, you are the reason that those people lived they wouldn't have without you there i was 100 percent ready to have them jump in thralls yeah mid-fight yeah you got them out so that they couldn't be possessed incredibly valuable especially considering the majority of our 
group of demons is all about protecting people and, and helping support them. So incredibly valuable. Bazazel. The fucking <laughs> trident. <laughs> You're like, whoa. <laughs> no, that was the uh, the staff was the like, staff. Sammy. <laughs> God, and the way you emoted it, you're like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, a, a fallen being surprised by using ca like catastrophic amounts of power is just awesome. <laughs> it was well, so he, good. He's, not, he's not that strong in Lore of Storms yet. And he's like, oh, wait, here's, shit, here's I the, I'm going full Thor. Thor. I'm going full Thor here. <laughs> you have the hammer, I have the lightning. Yes. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> I about died. <laughs> Agoras, I gotta say, for real, for real, for real, literally, <laughs> not only your apocalyptic form, but ravaging that last person going through. <laughs> hey, we're gonna send you to safety, by the way. Ah, I'm a demon. Okay, go on. <laughs> Change Look, the dude's name to aperitif, because that's all he was to you. <laughs> Look, all. Uh... Look. I walked into that. I know, because you, you had used some faith last session not, that didn't replenish. Not as prepared as I would have liked to. Yeah. And, uh, and I get hindsight. it. You did what you had to do because we needed to move fairly quickly on this before they had time to prepare. I would have had up to defenses. Trust me. Yeah. I took into account time. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, no, it was brilliant. Uh, it was a good way to show what we are capable of when we are pressed. And I really like that you did that. Had um, you had you waited till you regained your faith, I was going to put the malefactor in there with the devourer and chef. Yeah. Um, and of course, Carsador. Every time we get into combat, we are like fucking Bonnie and Clyde up in that joint. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't end the same, I but know, yes. Right? <laughs> it is What's like more the embarrassing ultimate for tag fallen? team. <laughs> I, did, I didn't expect to kill him with the hammer hit. I truly thought you were going to have to, like, do the coup de grace on that. He was mauled. He was mauled. One more, basically, he was done. Yeah. The lightning did a big number on him. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and 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 literally, the, the devourer was tasty. So, thank you, Shanky. <laughs> I could use some steak sauce, uh, steak sauce for the other one, but <laughs> can you put a one on a demon soul? Sure. Worcestershire. Soy sauce. <laughs> Soy sauce. Teriyaki. Ooh, teriyaki. Low, low sodium with soy teriyaki. sauce. See? Gotta watch my blood pressure. <laughs> mm, Thousand Island dressing on the devourer because you know it tastes like a uh, salad. So, yeah, I, I love this group. <laughs> and thank you all. Uh, this has been a big fight for him. So I'm giving everyone five XP. Y'all, uh, Virginia was in danger. Had Carsador not jumped in, it might have ended poorly for Virginia, to be fair. And she had no thralls nearby, so Virginia would have done what the Devourer did. Why do you think I ran up to you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Trust me. Erizeth noticed. Okay. You know, malefactors <laughs> have ways to escape. Defilers have ways to escape. Devourers only have punch you until one of you two die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't or, have escape plans. Mm -mm. Or maybe cause a roadblock with a lot of thick plant growth. But aside not from their that. their nature to withdraw from a fight, unfortunately. So thank you all for coming for this. Uh, if you want to join us on our Discord, pop over to our Discord. Uh, this show was cast from our Discord. And so you know, we have an open casting call right now. If you want to play Scion on stream with us. Or if you want to be a guest in Tiss's Call of Cthulhu game, we have two open casting calls for those two games. So, hey, pop over. If, if you apply for the Scion, you might get to play with Zach Rules running the Scion game. Or if you're going to be a guest in Call of Cthulhu, you'll get to be in Tiss's uh, twisted group of uh, investigators that always has the all the sus shit happening to them because they read the books and all that good shit. Plus, we do uh, weekly Zoom hangouts when... The wife, uh, my wife and I have spoons for it. We had a hectic week, so we had to skip it last week because we weren't set for that, unfortunately. So um, if you want to catch our back episodes, pop over to YouTube. 
all the demon back episodes. We've got so much World of Darkness content on our back episodes. Trust me. World, we have uh, Vampire, Werewolf, Changeling, Wraith, Demon. Uh, we've got lots of good mage. back shit. Mage, lots of mage, multiple <laughs> seasons of mage. And we've got other games as well. Bluebeard's Bride, Monster Hearts, Paranoia, Zasser Kala, uh, Nighthawks. That was one that a couple of the people here. I love that game. It was so fun. You know, so check all those. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, you want to see some amazing content creators? Check out our friends list. One of them rated us. Ravnus Archon, who rated us. That was one of them. Another one's the Ivy Raven down there at the bottom. And of course, Bazazale, tell us what you're doing. Twice a month, I host the Fancastic Four podcast, the number one Fantastic Four fan casting podcast on the internet, presumably. It is such an absurd idea for a fan cast that is great. Have you guys done Tarantino yet? Yeah, that was episode two. All right. I'll definitely have to make sure that I go back and watch that. Yeah, one. you got to, yeah. That'd be hilarious. Uh, I didn't get to see that one because I was doing other. I, I, it's so hard for me to catch up on old videos. Uh, I'm sure somebody mentioned the foot thing. Got to have. It's been a while. I don't remember. Because Tarantino is known for his little foot fetish on there. So, you know, uh, if you want to catch some uh, Mixed Studios merch, go to our merch store. Trust me, we don't really make money off this. Yeah, it's it's not much money on those. It's just a way to 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 show your love of the community just by getting you some merch. I'm not drinking from my your boy Twitch mug like I I was for the uh, vampire recording, but hey, it happens. Uh, let's see. Uh, you want to support the players of this stream? Bits of donations they go to the players, not to the studio. It's a way for you, the viewer, to show your love of the players. If you want to give something to the studio or support the studio, subscribe here on Twitch or. It pop over to our coffee. And if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, give us some subscribe on YouTube, uh, like the video, comment on the video, drive us up in the search ratings. And maybe one day we can aspire to a whole $20 a month in YouTube revenue. You know, that's the aspiration. YouTube don't pay much per thousand views. Trust me. It's pretty sad what you get on YouTube. And uh, now I can turn it over to my wife for the schedule. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for episode nine of season two of Demon the Fallen, The Road to Hell. And we really appreciate you checking us out for this stream. We enjoyed playing it and sharing our story with you. Coming up over the next week, we have on Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern, Tiss, Dr. Tiss, with London Esoteric Society, which is Call of Cthulhu 7E. It's likely to have some get at least one guest this weekend um, on Saturday. So join her. It is literally set in Victorian slash Edwardian because I think they've recently had the turn of the 1900s happen in their game. Um, and they basically started out where the players, um, their original characters are now basically off doing who knows what. And they've created new characters because their old characters literally went insane. Um, so, yeah, they're they're going to basically make new characters go insane while they're investigating, you know, elder cult sus shit. So go check them out on Saturday. It, it has a little bit of camp to it, so it's very fun. Join them. And then, of course, on sa on Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern, join us for Season 9, Episode 9 of Windy City After Dark, our Vampire V5 stream. Y'all. We haven't recorded, but I know it's going to happen, and it's fucked up, y'all. Y'all. Y'all know how Shanky does his vampire games if you've been watching us. The last two episodes of a season usually goes tits up and not in the good way. <laughs> There's going to be Ralphie on the back of the bus. I'm in danger. I'm in danger. <laughs> So, yeah, so that's Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern. And, of course, join us for the season two finale of this season of Demon the Fallen on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Yep, that's where you will get... Will we be doing another giveaway? Yes, we will. That's good you remind me of that. Uh -huh, on the season doing... finale we... of season two of Demon the Fallen, we yeah. are going to be giving away at the end of the stream one hardcover copy of the Demon the Fallen rulebook. Yep. Demon so, 20th anniversary edition. Yep. You'll want to watch the stream. And at the end of the stream, when I say the giveaway is open next episode, it, you have five minutes to, to enter and you'll be a command to enter. And then once you uh, mm -hmm. enter that command, 
Whoever wins gets a hardcover a copy. A hardcover copy. Yep. I'll reach out to you to get your address so I can send you a brand new hardcover copy of Demon the Fallen. Mm-hmm. It's season finale. We got to give a book away. Got to. And Relinda only reminds me because she's tired of seeing the box with that final book waiting for somebody. Yeah. It's sitting there inside. When you first walk into the studio, it's still in the yeah. box that was shipped in. Waiting for people. So do watch the season finale to get you a free book. <laughs> Somebody. Who knows who? And as always, everybody, mental health. We take that very seriously at McStabber Studios. Please take your mental health seriously and take the mental health of others seriously. Check in on friends and family and those around you. Please make sure they're okay. Try to be a lifeline that a lot of people need. And if you suffer from mental health issues like most people do, and I'm one of them, uh, first of all, it's okay to not be okay. There's nothing wrong with saying you have mental health issues because most people have them. They hide it because there's a stigma that should not be there attached to it. We don't believe in that stigma here at McStaver Studios. So please uh, take care of yourself. If you can't reach out to those around you, if you look in chat, there's a list of numbers you can call or text 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that you, if you are in crisis, you can get the help you need because uh, we're all struggling at times. Good days and bad days. But when you need help, use the numbers, please. And I can turn it over to my wife for her final portion of the episode. Y'all, I'm Mama McStabber. I'm a registered nurse. And so is Timber Brad over here that plays Agorath. And we're going to tell you. Get your goddamn shots, please. Yes. And I agree, mental health is health. It is part of the whole human existence. But physical health is too. So please get your vaccines, please. COVID is still a thing. I don't care what politicians say about it. It is still a fucking thing because our hospitals and nursing homes are full of people with it and dying from it. And most of the people dying from it now are truly unvaccinated, which has pretty much been the case. So get your goddamn vaccines. Also, I'm not only a nurse, I'm also a humanitarian. I give a fuck about people. I get satisfaction in my life caring for other people. That is why I became a nurse. Fuck fascists worldwide. Fuck the GOP. Fuck Putin. Fuck the Iranian government. And fuck Ron DeSantis. And fuck all the other Republican governors and fucking state politicians that are doing some fucked up shit. Why is it so hard to just Fucking let people live their lives. It's... They claim they're the fucking Freedom Caucus. Meanwhile, they're taking away freedoms from fucking human beings around the country. There's a lie in there, y'all. For real. <sighs> that is what happens when people aren't kind. When they don't care about anything but their own fucking selves. Please, be more like Mr. Rogers. Be kind. Be a good neighbor. Be a good neighbor. And I don't want to spend 10 minutes arguing on this, but uh, if you buy Hogwarts Legacy, or Hogwarts, the, the fucking wizard game. Yeah, the Hogwarts you're, Legacy. You are supporting a turf. anti-trans agendas. Mm-hmm. She has said specifically that she takes every sale as of that game and anything of as validation of, of her of purpose. Harry Potter really is validation of that you agree with her stances. Mm -hmm. You also support piracy. Half of the loadout of that game has been reported to be stolen from other more successful video games. And a side note, it's also got De Nuvro, uh copyright protection on it, which is literally a computer killer. Yep. It is a piece of shit malware fucking piece of software. Yep. Oh, my God. 
That was like icing on the holy shit, this is horrible cake. Your but, nostalgia is not more important than people's ability to just exist. Yeah, you do what you're going to do, but you won't see it in this house. Mm -mm. So I do thank you all for coming, and I thank my players for this amazing game. Uh, Much love to all y'all. It was a fight. It was dangerous. But as always Harry in the... Death was actually getting close to being really fucking hurt. Well, as always in Demon the Fallen, the whole game is broken in a fun way. So good night, everybody. See you next time.